And we're live here at the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal. And this is Annabelle Lecter. And we're joined and... by Marley Renfro, original Playboy bunny, uh, pinup model, actress, by double for Janet Lee and Alfred Hitchcock psycho, and very friendly lady who I talked to earlier. So it's nice to have you here. <laughs> it's great to be here. Very good. That is quite a selection of things for us to talk about. It's just amazing. Yes. So did Neil said original Playboy Bunny? Yes. I oh. have a, a picture here of the, uh, let's see, it's around here it is. I don't know if you'll see it. These are the very first, uh, let's see here. Ah, <laughs> there. Okay. I'm. Oh, wow. I'm here. That's me. But these are the very first. This uh, photo was probably taken around uh, March, about mid-March or so, or 1st of April, 1960. Amazing. Uh-huh. You are and all so very cute. First. so yeah, cute. Yeah. I thought that was the, uh, the oldest one, so it's like a... Well, was, you look fantastic, so... Yeah. It was 22 soon after I started there, so... So how did that come about? How did you uh, how did you end up one of the original ones? Well, um, after I did Psycho, I'd say a, a few months after I did Psycho, Playboy uh, flew me to Chicago to shoot this. I'm on the cover of the September uh, 1960 issue. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it's a, a famous cover. It's a um, uh jigsaw puzzle anyway oh, wow. at the uh, at my um exit interview um i found out that they were doing the finishing touches on the very first uh um playboy club and so i asked half i said uh if i move back to uh, hollywood and um, um get my things can I move back i said can i have a job and he said sure so i did uh, Went back to Hollywood, packed up, and moved to Chicago. And wow, but that job. Well, what yeah, what I was? He, a, yeah, I was just asking, yes. what was he like? What was Hugh Hefner like? He was very nice, very professional. Yeah. Um, I had a real good friend in uh, Miami Beach, Doctor Ralph Robbins. He was quite famous down there at that time. And I mentioned to him that uh, I got the job and I was going. And he says, uh, you just watch out. He's not for you. And that's all he said. So, and uh, uh, it's true. Um, you know, uh, everybody has different lifestyles, you know, and uh, um, whatever. So uh, we weren't on the same wavelength. I'll say that. And uh, he had a... Um, he drove a uh, Mercedes. I can't remember what what kind, but oh, there was a uh, uh, Mercedes uh, convertible, a '56 convertible, and had the the running boards, you know, and the big fenders, and mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted that so bad, but uh, I didn't make up that kind of money, you know. So, mm -hmm. so when uh, we talked, it was usually about Mercedes. <laughs> Uh, what were you about to show before I interrupted you? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Oh, here's a, a picture of uh, when I was there to um, uh, shoot the uh, the cover. I'm also on two full pages in the uh, July issue. It's called, uh, the article is called The Nude Look. And they had just uh, a clear plastic uh, dresses made of the styles of that day. And I have two full but anyway, uh, the, uh, the photographer took me to a, um, a ski club, and this is uh, there. Oh, wow. That's, that's a me at photo. the ski club just relaxing. So it's just, you know, it's unposed. Yes. You look very comfortable. Like, yeah. you feel comfortable with that person. Yes. Yes. He, uh, a very sharp photographer. Yeah. So uh, actually, how long were you a Playboy Bunny? Uh, about six months. I left there in, um, I don't know, September or so, mid-September, I'd say. Went back to Hollywood. When I was hired, um, I worked uh, at the door greeting people 
and uh, taking their keys and putting them up on a uh, on a board, magnet board, magnetic board, I guess. And um, uh, I was on a salary, and I found out that the uh, at that time, I always go around and about telling stories. I go off on little twigs. That's totally and fine. Yeah, that's what we're all about. <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> so um, you go to any bar, you know, any place in the United States, basically, and um, a mixed drink is 35 cents. Then at the club, it was $1.50. And Whoa. Nobody, <laughs> now, nobody said a thing or anything. So mm -hmm. I, I found out that the waitresses were really making a lot of money. So mm -hmm. I asked, um, I can't remember which um, manager, because there was a couple of Vic loans. I remember one. And I can't remember the other's name. But anyway, I asked if I could have a, um, a job as a waitress. And he says, sure. And he says, uh, do you have um, experience? And I said, no. And he says, well, no, you have to have experience. So I quit. And I got a job at a local uh, jazz club, the Cloisters. And I worked there as a waitress about two weeks, something like that, and quit and went back to Playboy and got a job as a, uh, a waitress. <laughs> oh, and I worked the, um, the lunch hour. And it was downstairs. It, uh, it, it was a split level. You walk in. And uh, there's just a, a fairly small landing. And then you walk downstairs and that's the uh, bar, basically. Mm -hmm. And there's booze, basically booze and, and you know, uh, stools up at the bar. And then you walk over and you walk up some stairs and it's, uh, I think they called it the den or something like that. But they had, uh, they had a buffet up there and a jazz group, basically. And lounge chairs and sofas and stuff so that's basically the layout anyway uh i'm working one day and um oh now i can't think uh uh i can't think of his oh a baseball player uh big uh shoot oh gee oh i'll think of his name anyway a lady um wanted to get uh, her picture taken with him. And uh, sure, so they're doing that. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, my dad, my dad's a big uh, baseball fan. So uh, I asked if I could, Stan the man, Stan Musial is who it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked if I could get in, you know, too. So uh, I have a, I ran across that photo. I haven't seen it since then. So 60 years went by and going through memorabilia, I came yeah. across it. But anyway, so well, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Yes. All these great memories. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Probably mostly great memories. I don't, we all have different memories, but those yes. sound like wonderful memories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh you mentioned, you know, you did the you went to Playboy after uh, Psycho. So how did you get the job uh on Psycho? Um, well, one of the photographers uh, I was working with, I worked with him quite a bit. Mario Caselli is his name. In fact, at that time, and then, gee, for years later, uh, if there's a, a photograph on the cover of um, a TV Guide, uh, it, more or less, it would be uh, uh, done by uh, Mario Caselli. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, after the end of our session, he says, oh, he says, uh, um, uh, they're at uh, Universal, UI, it was called it, uh, Universal, they're looking for um, a model. Mm -hmm. And he says, I just have a phone number. I don't know what it's about or anything. So I called and I got an interview. And so I met this, uh, uh, I guess, producer or whatever, I don't know, suit guy, uh, and then took me in, and uh, I uh, met uh, Hitchcock, and I was big, and still am, big fan of uh, Hitchcock. So uh, I, oh, I must say, um, I was a pinup model, and uh, I was a nudist at the time. So being without clothes, I was very comfortable. You know, just if you were comfortable with it, I was comfortable with it, type thing. You know. But anyway, I didn't. Well, anyway, we'll go do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I bet you were you were a very nice looking woman, so I bet a lot of people were comfortable with it. <laughs> well, I was from reason. Uh, one thing. Well, I uh, became a, a nudist to, just to get an overall tan, so I didn't have to wear <laughs> full body makeup. So that's the reason. But they mm -hmm. play volleyball there, and I'm a huge volleyball player. <laughs> so that's what I did. Really going to the clubs, camps, <laughs> play volleyball. Anyway, I had to undress for him. And then get dressed and go in and uh, see Janet and undress for her. Uh, well, she didn't undress, but uh, basically our figures were very similar, same height, and, you know, and everything. So, um, and then while there, uh, they uh, took me, uh, showed me where our makeup is, where I'll be coming, you know, for makeup. And then we went on the uh, sound stage, and. Um, had to walk up some steps and you know, go in and this here I don't know if you've ever been on a sound stage they're cavernous you know huge so our little bitty <laughs> the uh the shower scene set is really very small but there are other uh things like the into part of the interior of the uh motel the exterior a little bit out of the front and of the mansion, the stairs going up, and I'm not sure all, but there were others, you know, there. So uh, we saw, it. I don't know, I don't even think, they weren't filming that day. I think mm -hmm. it was just vacant. Uh, so it's in this giant cavernous, you use that word warehouse is basically all subdivided for different needs. Yeah, yeah. How, uh, and I don't know if they had a, a, a wall going across it or what. I just know it was went into because it was dark. You know, yeah. going up. Anyway, so um, I show up and uh, get me, uh, full makeup, full body makeup. And I wore, they put a gray, gray wig on me, gray curly hair wig. And uh, so they walked me over to uh, the sound stage. I had a, uh, a light like a seersucker robe and little slippers. And we approach the door and there's a, a red light flashing and it said, no admittance, close set. You know, and I thought, wow, you know. So we get there and open the door and walk in and there on the right is a set of bleachers. And I just, I, the irony, <laughs> I thought, ah! So... <laughs> Mainly male up there. It could have been female. I don't know. I recognized uh, Brian Keith. He's the only one I recognized. I think they're mostly uh, reporters and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, I was thinking, oh, they're probably expecting a stripper, put her on a show and all of this. And so what am I going to do just to calm everything down? So I stood around for, I don't know, a few minutes, something like that. And then finally said, okay, you're on. So uh, I, I took off my road and I, uh, and I just uh, did some stretching, you know, like you, uh, whatever, and just went on. And I, I was hired, I was hired for a couple of days. I was paid $500 for a couple of days. And I wound up working nine. Wow. And this is between Christmas and New Year's and, and then over into January, too. So uh, I know that Hitchcock had a talk with everybody associated that you no know, sniggery or anything. We're very professional, blah, blah, blah. There was not. And it was a really a, a very comfortable working atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It was, I'll, I'll tell you, um, he did one thing that was, uh, I really, I smiled on the inside. I, I didn't uh, show any emotion or anything on the outside. Um, this takes place, um, I'm basically dead, but I'm kneeling, sitting on my, on my uh, calves and, and the bottom of the bathtub. And it's just before I reach out and grab the shower curtain. Mm -hmm. And the camera is just over there to the right. And he gets this tape measure and brings it over 
walks nice and slow and breaks it over and puts it next to, not on, next to my left nipple. <laughs> well, I thought that was so funny because obviously you don't have to have a, a tape measure, you know, you, you can get the focus in on the camera. <laughs> but I... I just, I did. I really just smiled <laughs> on the inside. It just, I didn't, I just sat there as, uh, like a rock. Mm -hmm. So why did it take, uh, why did the scene take nine days to shoot? I really think they expanded it because mm -hmm. they, um, have you seen the movie 7852? I actually watched it last night before the interview. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, have you seen it? I have not. Neil, where did oh, you get it? I, I found it on Pluto TV. I actually sent you the oh, link, but it was yeah. probably too late. Yeah. Because yeah. I didn't actually, I honestly did not even know about it until last night when I was just looking up some things to maybe to ask. And then oh, I found wow. the movie and so I watched it. Yeah. So it's I will watch it. Yeah, it's great. It's <laughs> documentary based solely on the shower scene. Mm -hmm. and, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, I really think it should be an all. Um, film classes, uh, high school up to, you know, into college, university, because um, it's on the genius of Hitchcock of why he did certain things, why he had a certain painting like over the peephole and stuff. Just amazing, really. It's very well done also. It's mainly um, interviews, people in the business, all, you know, in and out of the um, camera, mm -hmm. so including Marley yourself. Yeah, yeah I'm in yeah. there. <laughs> so uh, that's how. That, that's the only thing I can think because really they. Uh, um, oh, seventy eight fifty two. Mm -hmm. They got the name seventy eight. There are seventy eight individual frames in the shower scene in that three minutes or two and a half minutes, however long it is. And there's 52 different camera setups. Wow. Yeah. All around, all around, up, all around, all around, all around and everything. And, and, and uh, so much of it was um, basically kind of slow motion, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, really when uh get into it, that was the only really hairy part, because they used a real knife, they used a real butcher knife, um, was when um, uh, Tony's uh, uh, shower scene double was a female, same build and height and everything. And um, she and I uh, really, with the water going and, and uh, blood and... Um, going in and she's making you know like that and i'm going off and all this uh that's when the night it it never touched me but it came close you know not real close but mm -hmm. yeah so like um in like the script like how detailed was the shower scene like it, was it written out like each shot it was it storyboarded like no, uh -uh. you know i think uh yes he did have a storyboard mm -hmm. to work off of in fact um uh just off of our little set our bathroom um he had a great big tent i'd say a 12 by 15 13 by 15 foot tent black canvas goes uh, up the sides four feet and then you know uh, a roof and the only thing in there was a, a long table and a chair and he between I probably not between every shot but a lot he went in there and he was going over paperwork or whatever yeah and uh, you're you said you know that you were comfortable uh being nude in front of people um how about like the water though like uh I would think nine morning. how how often was the shower on like, was it on the Not entire... A bit, really. Yeah. Just a... Well, yeah, it would be. It would be until he gets uh, and turns it off. Mm -hmm. So it's on just... Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, I don't know if... Was that... Well, was it... Did they keep the, sh the shower warm or was it cold? Yeah, they or? did. No, uh-uh. 
No, it was, it was very comfortable. Yeah. But I would yeah. think after nine days of uh, taking a, you know, under the water, you, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, was there any issues from that? Well, you know, no, there weren't. There weren't, you know, and uh, I wasn't constantly in because right. you would just shoot a little bit and then they would get set up some other place or do something. So I'd, I'd, get, I'd step out and dry off and put my robe on. Mm-hmm. He'd go and, to the tent. You know, huh? <laughs> He'd go to the tent, take a yep. break. <laughs> no, uh-uh. Uh, um, oh. Didn't have one. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, I, and I just Alfred... when the, Sorry, uh, the Tony was there. He wasn't there very much because he was either uh, rehearsing a play or in a play in New York. And so he was in and out, in and out. And when he was there and when we had downtime, when they were uh, getting set up, we would play um, games, you know, ghost and stuff like that. Word what games. Ghost? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of ghost. What is ghost? I'm trying to think of what it is. Um, <laughs> I knew I, I I'm trying to think if it's uh, if you uh, name some uh, uh, vowels mm-hmm. and it's a five letter word mm-hmm. and oh, you try and guess the word. Mm-hmm. I have to look this up. I'm so yeah. Curious. Yeah. Annabelle and I play a lot of games yeah. when we meet up. So yeah, yeah. we'll have to look up ghosts. <laughs> yeah. like cards and just all <laughs> kinds of different stuff. But yeah. yeah. So, uh, so what, what was, uh, what was Anthony Perkins like? You know, as a, you, you oh, were playing so games with nice. him, he must have been a nice, nice guy. Nice, yeah. nice young man. Really very nice. Uh, not shy, but he was a quiet person. Mm-hmm. But he was and, very pleasant. Yeah. And one uh, of the nicest persons too was Vera Miles. She was just a dear. She was, she and John Gavin and, um, Marty Balsam came on the set a few times too. And uh, uh, they were all nice, but really uh, Vera spent some time with me. And she just, and uh, she she was saying that uh, she had a wig on something like mine. Mm-hmm. And uh, she just got through um, working a film, it was Amazon Women or something like that. And she had to have her uh, head shaved. So she, wow. had to wear, oh, wow. she had to wear a wig and she says, oh, I love it. I could do this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did Alfred Hitchcock wear the the tuxedo the entire uh, shoot that you were there? Uh, it wasn't a tuxedo; it was a black suit, black mm-hmm. tie, white shirt. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, everybody else was in regular clothes, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you even get into the world of performance? Hmm. Pardon. How did you- get into the world of performance to begin with? Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, back in 1956, I was doing, um, I graduated from high school in 55 and at 17. And I, I started doing beauty contests mm-hmm. and I got an agent lady. And uh, that's what I did. I did a lot of beauty contests. And at one, uh, down at uh, Venice, it used to be, uh, that area used to be called Muscle Beach there. Mm-hmm. Um, a, uh, I don't know what he was. Uh, he, he, NTG, Niles T. Garland was his name. And he, here I am, what, um, 18? No, I was 17. I was 17 then. Uh, he, um, he says, uh, he got me a job out. Do you remember the um, Elmira, Elmirador Hotel in Palm Springs? I don't. It's a, it's a hospital now. Oh. But it, was, it was shaped like a, a mission. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I yeah. 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 Well, um, I got a job there with another girl. Um, uh in a bathing suit around the pool, a sundress walking around. It's for postcards and, you know, and brochures and stuff like that. Oh, that's where I got Marley is a nickname. My uh, given name is Marlis. M-A-R-L-Y-S. And nobody can pronounce it. Marley's all these other things. <laughs> and this other girl, um, 
uh, with the same money. She got the job too. And uh, I don't know, we, I guess dri we being driven back to uh, Hollywood. And she says, uh, Marla, that's, a, that's too old of an, uh, a name for you. You need something else. Oh, how about Marley? And she says, instead of a Y, do an I. So that's what I, I got the name Marley. It's a great name. It is, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so I meet, I got the job through uh, NTG. So uh, uh, he told me at when we were at uh, um, Muscle Beach, he says uh, they're uh, casting for chorus dancers for Las Vegas. And uh, he says, I don't know how much, you know, I don't think you have to have that much experience dancing. So he gave me the address and time and everything, and I went. And uh, I've always been a good ballroom dancer. And um, so anyway, I tried out for it, and I got it. I got the job. So uh, it was at the um, Del Rancho Vegas. And it's funny how you have connections at things. I find out. Oh, just, I don't know, maybe about five, six years ago, that the El Rancho was the very first um, resort on the Sunset Strip. Hmm. Not the Sunset, uh, the Strip, Las Vegas. Okay. Yes. Of the name. Anyway, Strip there. It opened on my birth, my third birthday. And here I get a job there. As uh, there were six of us girls, our dancey girls, and and we just did little things, you know, because uh, we had the main dancer, uh, Renee Moldar, because she did all the things, you know, all, the, all these things, and we were just pretty and had these pretty little costumes. <laughs> I mean, we did a few steps. She taught us some steps. <laughs> but that's She's not acrobatic. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not us. No, no. no. She, she did. She just, you know, yes. And she fainted after uh, uh, the curtain closed every night. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. So, oh, one time I uh, I got some smelling salts and put it down. And boy, she came up out of there and she looked, oh, shit. I, oh, excuse me. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Fine. <laughs> You're very free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, I, I worked there. Um, it was a fun town then. This is 56, 57. May, May 56 to, I don't know, September, October 57. Mm -hmm. I worked there. And uh, everybody knew everybody. There were only about six or seven uh, hotels on the strip then. Mm -hmm. So really everybody knew everybody. Were there big acts in there right away or did that take time? Because oh. I know there were so many performers. Like Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. oh, yes. Oh, and they threw parties too. Oh, yeah. Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Nat King Cole. Uh, oh, you name it. Uh, really yeah we didn't have the uh the big names like that at at the el rancho yeah but uh we had good names but they just weren't star 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 you know mega mega but we were invited to everything and uh the other uh, uh the other um hotels um would invite us as a group dance to go you know see shows and stuff or go to parties there that sounds amazing do you feel like at that time you understood how amazing it really was? No, I know I didn't. Yeah. I took everything for granted. Yeah. I mean, I still do, you know. Um, I really don't analyze mm -hmm. anything. Uh, so I picked up there. I said, oh, I want to go to New York. So I went to New York. And I first got a job at Fiat Motors as a receptionist because I had experience mm -hmm. as a receptionist. And um, then I uh, interviewed and auditioned for the Latin Quarter. Are you guys familiar with the mm -hmm. Latin Quarter in New York? Mm -hmm. So I got a job there. 
as a dancer. And that was in, let's say, the fall of 57. I was there until spring, just right after my birthday, I know, because I had my birthday there of uh, 58. And that was, I mean, you had to dance. And I learned a lot of steps. I'm telling you right now, I did. Well, I've been a quick learner. And mm -hmm. so uh, that was that was really a, a wonderful experience. I thoroughly enjoyed that. So it sounds like it was a place you really had to keep up. Oh, definitely. Oh, <laughs> and big, big production numbers. We yeah. There would be, though, they had... Uh, I'd say at least 40 dancers. Wow. And then they had showgirls. And they had the fifth, the numbers, some of the numbers were 15 minutes long. Big, wow. big production numbers. This one was um uh can can like Moulin Rouge and wow. uh, heavy red velvet and then kicking, you know, just boom, you know, and just I'm a sweater and geez, I would just be pouring off of me afterward. And uh, another one was um, Kismet, you know, mm -hmm. Arabian Nights and, and um, had two singers there and they're both dressed, you know, to turban and then veils and everything. And they're, uh, take my hand, I'm a straight, that song. Well, she doesn't show up. Senior doesn't show up this one, one time. Who did they pick to be her? <laughs> me. Wow. <laughs> and I don't say, yeah, you do not want me to say. <laughs> How and did you get chosen? I haven't. Oh, wow. And I thought, there's other, you know, look how many other dancers, you know, mm -hmm. probably good singers, but why? I, I don't no so um i know you know in television in the movies and television but you know um i'd see movies where they sing to each other mm -hmm. and i thought how can they keep a straight face somebody singing pouring their love out That's <laughs> the weirdest thing i've ever heard so well, i'm serious so they choose me I had the hardest time keeping a straight face. I know my chin was going like this because I wanted to <laughs> laugh. Uh, uh, <laughs> did it go better than you thought it would? I guess. I don't know. It was just that one <laughs> night. It had to... <laughs> you were never asked again. <laughs> oh, she, no, she always showed up after that. <laughs> Uh, Puppy says it's a wonderful, inter a wonderful interview so far with a lovely woman. Thank you for sharing your stories with us, Marley. Oh, you're welcome. I'm sorry I didn't. Did I do enough for you? Oh no, I'm just saying. Um, just some oh, of the people no. here in the chat. Yeah. Wow. Oh, this, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. I it was an goodbye to me. I thought. <gasps> Gee. No. 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 no, no, no of course not. And yeah. I have a picture to show. Okay, let me <laughs> show you some pictures. All yeah. right. Yeah. Okay, these are frames from the movie. This is what I sell at, uh, I go to um, uh, conventions and I sell uh, lots, photos, and my magazines. Oh, I didn't finish that. When I was modeling, I modeled for uh, about two and a half years. And I am in, that I know of, I'm in a total of um, 68 magazines. 15 on the cover, and seven centerfold. Yeah. So anyway, this is a frame from the movie. Of course, the knife at the belly button. Oh, and that's another thing, too. That was um, uh, Hitches. Oh, I'm Bring sorry. Here we go. Uh, no, it's fine. Wow. I jumped the gun. There. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a great shot. Yeah. Uh, Woo. There. Um, How did they make that happen without slicing? Yeah, because you said it's a real I knife. So it's, it seems very, very close. Oh, yeah. Exactly. They uh, painted the knife red, bloodied, and they pressed it against my stomach and then pulled back all slow motion and then um, pulled it back. And then for the film, they reversed the film oh. and showed it going in. Wow. And that's another thing, too. 
I mentioned about uh, uh, conventions. Uh, I, I love it. I just, I love working with the people and they're so, I don't draw a huge crowd. Uh, not like, you know, wh whoever. Uh, anyway, any of you big uh, stars, I do nothing like that. But the people that come up to me, they're so excited. They just can't wait to tell me how long it took them before they finally took a shower. <laughs> right. It's like Jaws. People, you know, didn't want to go in the water. I know. Jaws. The and then, effect, yeah. Right. Yeah. The effect the movie had on them that some of them locked make sure they lock the bathroom door to this day because of it. I read that Janet Lee was one of them that after that, she, she didn't take showers. I think she oh, uh, took that. She, do, she didn't do anything. On the <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, she, you know, she was so cold to me, you know, nobody oh. else was so warm and nice and she was just, you know, so That's unfortunate. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, I had, um, I, uh, uh, I went to the, uh, uh, the premiere of 7852. It, it premiered up at Sundance in, in 2017. IFC bought the film distribution rights to the Americas. And so they, uh, uh, <clears throat> sent me to New York and uh, set up with a, a lot of interviews, you know, Time, uh, Esquire, uh, just, I don't know, I, I did five or six interviews. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them, I can't remember his name. Uh, I think he still does it. He did the uh, uh, entertainment for uh, uh, CBS Sunday Morning. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, he just did a really a wonderful interview with me just very very nice very complimentary just really good and um it was after that that uh francis ford coppola contacted me and i haven't been in touch with him since we worked together in uh, 1961 i think maybe mark i worked with him when he was still um a student at UCLA Film School. Wow, that's pretty wild. That's yeah. a, on his first movie. Anyway, anyway. So, okay, here's another. Uh, so, can you see that? Yeah. All uh, right, this is an overhead shot. It shows me shielding myself. Yes. And I, I have my, um, re I got my hand on her wrist, it looks like. Mm -hmm. This is wow. one of them. Okay, here's another. This is. Oh, that's see? really wild. Okay, that's uh, Tony pulling me out of the uh, yeah the uh, shower, the bathtub, and um, he pulls me out and he uh, uh, wraps me in the um, shower curtain. Yeah. And he gets under me and lifts me up about six inches and bang. Oof. He wasn't set up. He was lifting me with his back, and I—I I only weighed about 105 then. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they taught him, you know, how to lift with your leg, and uh, yeah. like he wasn't that. used to lifting uh, people no. up wrapped in shower curtains, which yeah, is probably no, a good. No. Thing, but yeah. That's where the stuff is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking too, because it's obviously him in the scene, you know, it's yeah. not, like cut it around. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's a, a casual shot of me at that time. Oh, that's a great shot. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay, Drinking here's one of, of my tea, covers. Like Come here. What was your hair color? Red. Yeah. Oh, I kind of that. I love natural redhead. I see little redheaded babies, and I just love it. Uh, Wet paint. <laughs> now. Well, that's a nice one. I love the art of it. I, yeah. Uh, I love the art of my body. That's what uh, I aim for a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> there. All right. There. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. And then this one. This is the last. Another. Wow. 
That's very cool. The background almost matches Annabelle's shirt, actually. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you would okay. be lost here. <laughs> Blame right in, huh? Yeah. Uh, what a great model, says uh, puppy. puppy. I'm so glad you had those to share with yeah. us. It's yeah. I, I don't have all the magazines. Yeah. <coughs> I'm in a total of um, six different Playboys. Wow. That on the cover and then uh, various uh, shots. Mm. So, um, when you started doing the, the conventions, like had it been, when did you come out that you were, you know, the, the stunt double or the body double for psycho? Like had that, when did, was that known? Well, uh, I was introduced, this is in, uh, the year 2000. Yeah. The year 2000. Was it then? I guess so. Anyway, uh, I was introduced to eBay, eBay. Mm -hmm. and um, my first husband had me get rid of all my modeling things, all my oh, pictures, yeah. and none of them. You know, when I first started modeling, you couldn't even show a nipple, you mm -hmm. know. And I mean, <laughs> look at the difference today. Jeez. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really. So, um uh, oh, and I had a good inch high uh, stack of uh, um, glossies from when I was in Vegas on stage with our little pretty costumes yeah. and dresses, you know, and stuff. And it got ha had me get rid of every very controlling, very. Mm, and what you find out later, 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 how your mm -hmm. life is changed. You're already. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I wondered, you know, really, uh, how much is out there? So I just put my name in and um, uh, search, you know, uh, and anytime my name came up, uh, mm -hmm. and then I, I, I remembered a few magazine, uh, their names, you know, and so I put those in, search those, and that's how it started. So I started actually there gathering, and I did that yeah. for a few years, and um, after about, oh, let's see, what was it? I guess about five, six years. Uh, yeah, it was about five or six years. Um, I bet on uh, 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 one, and I missed out on it, a magazine. And then uh, I saw, I bet on another one, I saw it was the same seller. <laughs> Oh, so must have I won the second one. So when uh, you can put, um, and this is the first time I did this too. It's weird how things happen. Uh, you can note to the seller. And yeah. so I wrote on there, I said, that's me on the cover. And she came back. Oh, she says, I thought that was you. <laughs> In fact, the, uh, the last magazine uh, that you bid on that you lost, the uh, winning bidder said he's, going to write an article about you or something oh, like wow. that. So I went back on history and, and found the last one that I lost. And so uh, you could contact the seller that way. You know, I ha I'm just a number and he was just a number. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I said, uh, hi, uh, I understand. Uh, I, I also bid on that and I'm Marley Renfro. <laughs> and I understand that you're going to write an article. Well, it turned out it was Robert Gray Smith. He wrote um, um, Zodiac, the Zodiac Killer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He wrote that. And um, he was a huge fan of mine when I was modeling. In fact, he had Amazing. he had the Playboy cover up on his wall when he was a teenager. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> so he's the one who wrote my uh, biography, The Girl in Alfred Hitchcock's Shower. And he found out so, I mean, uh, I just sailed through that and did, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the movie and stuff. He really got into background and and all of this, just detail, de detail oriented. Um, in uh, 2001, uh, we're up, uh, uh, we're vacationing here in uh, uh, California, up in the mountains. 
And uh, we watched, they had a, a new program, new rendition of I've Got a Secret. Right, yeah. That's a cute show. And uh, based in Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, I think it was a, a, a Oprah's channel or something. Oh, yeah. Jen. And they said, uh, came on and said, uh, <coughs> if you have a secret, um, uh, give us a call, you know, and we'll see. And uh, just, you know, the, the number came up and then it was gone. So mm -hmm. made sure I had a paper and pencil next to me. Mm -hmm. And next time we watched it, I wrote it down. <coughs> and so I called him and got a, a voicemail. So I said, um, I'm not famous, but I did some, uh, something famous. I was uh, Janet Lee's acting double in the shower scene with Psycho. And just a few minutes later, I get a call back and wound up going on. And, and um, uh, the panel there, Terry Garr was uh, one of the uh, ones on the, uh, the panel. And uh, uh, that was a delight. And, and one of the uh, uh, breaks, uh, we're just sitting around and uh, uh, another panelist uh, said, well, uh, what, was, uh, what was Janet Lee like on the, uh, on, the, on the set? And I was set to stay, say my usual, she was cold. And that was it. Terry Garb pipes up and says, she was a bitch. <laughs> 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 I, I love Terry Garch. I, I, love I love her talent. <laughs> yeah. Now you even loved her more after that. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. I'm out yeah. to find that episode. Yeah. I, I love, yeah. Oh, that's another thing, too. Uh, when I was talking with him before I went down to uh, tape the show, I mentioned that I'm on the cover of Playboy. Oh, bring the magazine. We'll put it on the coffee table in front of us. So, uh, we went down there, and uh, one of the one of the people says, "Oh, we got to call Playboy and get they're okay that we can yeah. do this." So she leaves. She comes back shaking her head. Just I don't know. She says, uh, "I asked him about it, and they said no. You don't have our permission. Besides, she's dead." <laughs> <laughs> and they looked at each other. I'm not dead. <laughs> but it was Ray Graysmith who found out that uh, a model had posed for Saul Bass, mm. something like that, uh, for the storyboard, or I don't know, and uh, a handyman. And it was uh, publicized that she did the shower scene. She uh, acted, you know, oh, uh, wow. she had the acting job. That I did. So, and uh, some, uh, uh, I guess, handyman she dated or whatever. Anyway, he killed her. And that's how it, I, it did. That's how it became known that I had died. I had been killed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's, an, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a terrible story. So yeah. That's very dark in so many ways. Wow. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it turned out my parents uh, uh, had moved to Hollywood. They were lived near uh, Western and uh, Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, uh, there was a, uh, uh, a serial killer who had a fixation uh, with uh, Psycho. And he uh, uh, was into uh, older women. In fact, he killed his uh, mother's sister, his aunt, and uh, one or two other ladies. But he lived within a mile of my parents. Wow. <coughs> wow. That, that's a story in itself, yeah. Yeah. And we can make a movie wow. about that guy, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, when you mentioned that Francis Ford Coppola, you know, contacted you after, after the book came out or after the story came out, um, what, what did, what did he want to talk to you about? Uh, just hello. How are you yeah. doing? Um, just, it's like, uh, um, uh, we saw each other, uh, instead of 50 years ago, uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago, he wanted to know if I drank wine. I said, yes. And he said, <laughs> oh, he's pitching his wine to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> a case of wine. Oh, well, that's nice. And uh, that was about it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my husband, right after that, my husband wondered, he, he said, are you guys the same age or what? So I, I, uh, I didn't know, you know, I hadn't, uh, 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 never thought about it, but I, yeah. I Googled his name and, uh, I'm a, a year and four days older than he is. Oh, okay. He's April 7th. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty, that's really nice of him though, that, you know, to, to contact, him, you know, after, yeah. You know, was, yeah. You know, and uh, that's another thing, too. Uh, when I worked with him, I worked with, it was a little girly movie. It was a risque at the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, he reminded me so much of Hitchcock that I re- it really did. I thought, this young man's going someplace because yeah. just I just recognized the genius in him. And I... I'm so proud of him, of uh, what uh, he has done with his life, his his, his talent. Yeah, yeah. I, I would assume that uh, that you know, since that's his, that was his first movie, it probably it must be special to him, uh, the movie itself, and uh, and and you being part of it. So I think that's a nice story. It is. It is. So I did he use a tape measure at any point? <laughs> Huh? Did he use a tape measure at any point? <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, what did you think of uh, Psycho the first time you saw it? Well, uh, being that I saw a few things being shot other than I saw him, uh, a few things in, in, in the mansion and, um, you know, uh, outside in the front of the uh, motel and stuff and uh, my roommate uh, in the summer of uh, '60, when it came out, she uh, she says uh, she was a, a bunny also, and she says, "Oh, she says Psycho came out. Let's go see it." And I thought, how boring. I saw. Him. I know what it's about. You know, it scared me half to death. It really <laughs> did. Wow. Although since then, I've seen, especially the the shower scene. I have seen yeah. that. Uh, many times, mm-hmm. many, many, many times, just to clarify in my mind, oh, right, you know, and stuff. Um, I, in 85, I went uh, uh, to the library and I was looking at uh, new releases and I see that uh, Janet Lee just came out with a an autobiography and I thought oh I wonder if she mentioned Psycho in there so uh, I look at the index and she's got a lot of Psycho and she talks about oh all she did to you know get pasties and get this kind and that kind and blah blah blah, blah. and <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> oh. Feel free. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> <Love that>, Marley. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she ha- oh, just went on and I thought if you're lying about that, you know, what else are you lying about in your life? So mm-hmm. I thought I don't want to read the book. Mm-hmm. And 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 I also thought, you know, she has been she has really been in so many films. She's a, really a big big star and i thought you know it's just that's to me that was very little of her to do that you know she did it and and then um uh i was going through some old paperwork that i had and one was a uh, a review from uh, uh when my um my biography came out the girl in alfred Hitch- hitchcock shower is the name of the book I love that name. Yeah. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. The, a review from, uh, it was published in uh, Great Britain to Titan is the uh, uh, the publisher. And in the review, uh, he talks about um, uh, Janet Lee, and then he quotes Tony Curtis and uh, goes on about, how um, 
before the film comes out, they talk about just she does the shower scene, nobody else, ba ba ba, and uh, they advertise it, and they both agree, uh, both uh, 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 Janet and uh, uh, Hitchcock agree. That's you know, you didn't have a double, you did everything, and, and uh, Tony. Uh, oh, and she uh, she goes on to say, "Oh, I can't take a shower." I can't. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so, so, and Tony goes on to say, "That ruined our marriage." She she uh, just uh, became a nervous wreck because she had all these lies to live up to, and uh, became an alcoholic. And he said, it ruined our, our, our lives. He says, that's the reason we got a divorce. Wow. Wow. So, uh, admit, yeah, Anastasia, Anastasia Elfman has joined us. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> also, so actress, actress, Anastasia. All kinds yes. of things film, and she was going to be our second person. Oh, and, uh, after, your time. I'm sorry. No, no, no we, we, we plan to have some interaction with you guys together because uh, Anastasia is also a big fan of Psycho. Okay. <laughs> what a wonderful moment to drop in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what beautiful hair you have. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. It How is. Kind. It's lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll mention a, couple, a few things that have happened to me just as an adult that really don't have anything to do with show business, quote unquote. Um, I was a regular contestant on Wheel of Fortune. Really? Really? This is in 1986. Mm -hmm. And I won three out of four games. Mm -hmm. And uh, I won the big prize. That was a $10,000 gift certificate to uh, Van Cleef in Arpel. Mm -hmm. So I shared in the 80s. That was a huh? lot of money in the 80s. It was. I don't yeah. think, I don't know if people remember think, that. Yeah. yeah. I know you look at it today and it's, you know. Yeah. Well, I, I think you need to thank uh, Anthony Perkins because you said you guys played Ghost together oh, and it yeah, was like yeah. a word game. And so that, that prepared you for, uh, for Wheel of Fortune. Yes. Well, um, I know it, this had to be in the early seventies. I just think of where I am to, cause I move, I've moved a lot. And so anyway, um, it was Christmas time and my mom and I, um, were at uh, May company and they have a book section there and they had a, um, a, um, this size dictionary. And I said, Oh mom, I said, Oh, Give me that for Christmas. That's what I want. And I, I got, well, I got it. But I would pick it up and just open it up mm -hmm. and just start reading it. I just, or just, you know, if I wanted a word, I, you know, and then I'd look here and synonyms mm -hmm. and antonyms. So I just see other things. On, I just, I love words. So anyway. I am, have to say, I've never heard of any other person doing that. I remember getting. A dictionary and a thesaurus the same year as a kid and it was amazing and thesaurus especially i was just fascinated with oh them. yes yes oh good <laughs> yeah you're the first person i've talked to too right? i loved it that was the best <laughs> then my uh, name uh i've been on jeopardy twice how was that um i cannot i do not have that information i wish i had the recall oh i have it on well, let's see if i can get it on my phone i, I probably i don't know if you're gonna pass it through or not anyway it is um here gallery um it came out the first time it uh, came out was on my 75th birthday and um, we were at a Mexican restaurant drinking um, shots of tequila and margaritas. Nice. <laughs> and um, let's see here, it's gonna be coming up. Um, I may not even get it. Um, 
Marley is a fun woman. I'm yeah. learning. <laughs> anyway, a friend called and uh, told me that I'm on Jeopardy. And I watch Jeopardy every night. And I, I didn't watch it on night I'm on. And then um, five years later, they have me on again. It says um, something like, uh, what do Marley Renfro, a cassava melon, and Hershey syrup have in common in a very famous film scene? <laughs> oh my goodness! And uh, that that was what was actually used for the blood was the Hershey syrup, watered, watered down. Yeah. So what is yeah. the cassava melon? Uh, they from? used to um, get that in seventy eight fifty two too. Um, yeah. They used a bunch of things, uh, stabbing the knife, uh, and they oh. thought of what would sound like it entering a um, person, you know, a body. So if we see that movie, we're hearing melon. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it sounds delicious. Melon and Hershey uh, chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> they should have served it on the set. Yeah, exa exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. If actually at the conventions you go to, that would be a fun thing for someone to put together. If they have like a themed dessert, it could be a psycho themed dessert with melon and chocolate syrup. And yeah. Oh, Start I with did a, with a butcher uh, knife. <laughs> a, a fan of mine um, about uh, I don't know eight nine years ago said, uh, "If I send you a shower curtain, will you uh, find it?" <laughs> yeah. So I'm surprised more people haven't done that now. I think shower about curtains. Mm -hmm. Now oh, I don't have one in front of me. <laughs> um, I have a psycho written real big up at the top. And then I have I have red paint and I have handprints a few places and grab it down at the bottom right, you know, where I pull the yeah. shower curtain down. And then blood spatters. That's where it's like, oh amazing. So I <laughs> sell you make those these. Huh? Do you make these yourself? Yeah. I have That's a uh, awesome. I have a, I have clothesline. In fact, I just made some. Was uh, two weeks ago. I made six. I can make six at a time, mm -hmm. and then uh, within the last year, I thought tote bags. So I bought a dozen tote bags, and I just do little miniature. I write psycho, and then sign my name, and then one handprint, and then splatters on it i like that because each one's unique because it would it wouldn't be Everyone all it's, it's not like all printed uh blood splatter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. everyone's that an individual and where can people get those uh, well um uh, right now just at conventions although I, i'm talking with uh, a lady who is going to uh put them online i don't know right well, let us know when they are, and we'll. Uh, I, will. Uh, I want one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think we all want one. Yeah. I want one of each. <laughs> <laughs> That's so well, cool. Some people, uh, uh, the well, the lady who said that has it in her shower. That's you know, <laughs> some people who uh, they put it in. She just has the one bathroom, but some in their uh, hall bath. Um, or just have it out at uh, Thanksgiving. <laughs> and I have a knife too. I get, uh, I get. Uh, oh, they're seven-inch uh, butcher knives, and uh, I have. Uh, I I signed on the knife itself, and then on the uh, other because they're real knives. I I uh, write, um, you know, uh, shower scene body double, mm -hmm. and then I, I I paint the cover red. Mm -hmm. So they get the total package of the curtain and the the knife. You're oh. not just an everyday convention seller. Like these are really, really clever, wonderful yeah. things. This is the kind of stuff that they sell, like that people go around to conventions who are creators make stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to I'm leaving in the morning. I'm really? leaving I'm leaving home at uh, seven o'clock in the morning to take a flight to uh, San Antonio for a convention. I'll be there for the weekend. Yep. I'll let everyone know it's uh, Kings and Queens of Horror, December 9th and 10th in San Antonio. Yes, it's, it's actually, it's called, um, I just found out the name of it. Hmm. Monsters and Mayhem. All right, all right. Mm, that sounds 
familiar. Yeah. But I've done a, a bunch of um, WonderCon. I started off, in fact, uh, the author of my book mm -hmm. introduced me to conventions, uh, mm -hmm. to WonderCon. WonderCon is um, uh, a baby of uh, Comic-Con. Oh, it's cool. just a, a smaller version of uh, Comic Con. So uh, the first one was up in uh, 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 San Francisco, and drove up there for that, and my first time, and and uh, I uh, all I had was um, a, I think it was just a picture of the book. I don't even think it came out then, and just some photos, and that was it. Now I have. Gee, I, could, I fill up a table. We've had a lot of people come on who just discovered the convention thing because you discover it, right? You don't know. Yeah. And they're very concerned about what they're walking into. And I think everyone has said they've realized how wonderful fans are and how respectful and lovely. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what's really big now is anime. Yeah, the law, the lines are so long. Yeah. Who's the guy? I keep forgetting his name. He played in a Star Trek. Uh, William Shatner? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, he was across from me. Uh, I, I've been to quite a few Hollywood shows. It's in Burbank and Pasadena. And um, last time uh, I was right across the, um, in the room, just the aisle way from him and um most of us charge uh uh say forty dollars started <laughs> right. out when i first started uh was twenty dollars for your signature and you know and you get mm -hmm. a uh, photo free or whatever he i he charges over 200 and he has yeah. a lot and people come with five six things for him to sign and he works about a half hour. He has three or four people working for him, organizing his, you know, taking the money, blah, 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 da, 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 and all of this. And then he rests, and then he comes out for another, you know. Wow. Yeah. My, my, nice person, too. My, my favorite turndown from not, from not doing the show is from William Shatner. I, I asked him to come on the show, and immediately I got a reply back, it says William Shatner only does major media and it was all in capitals. Major, major <laughs> yeah. media. And in my mind, wow. it was him himself. <laughs> to, like, what? Why would this person it's even ask? Very him? offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me laugh a lot. <laughs> but you don't, you don't understand. I put my name in capitals. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I do. I, I showed you this actually uh, earlier, but we weren't live. I do want to show this. This is yes. Al painted this for me yeah. for Christmas. I know oh, my birthday you in 2014. That? You yes. did? Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Is it in black and white? Yep. Yeah. Grayscale. Yeah. yeah. All right for you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's that's it's, ten years yeah. ago in a, in a couple Take a months. Picture of it for me and. and you got my email. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think I've got a pretty good picture. Yeah, I've got a picture and I can send it yeah. along. Yeah. yeah. All right. Awesome. And you can feel free if you, I'm not saying do it, but if you decided you want to use it, please do whatever, do whatever okay. you want with it. No All expectation, right. but if you decided you did want to do anything with it. Make sure it's it. autographed. Make sure it's autographed. Mm -hmm. I'll sneak it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on social media for people to follow you or? No. I don't know what That's you do. No, yeah. I am. I'm not a techie at all. Sure. I'm always calling my daughter. Oh, oh. Now, it should be a, um, a car's engine. I can take that apart. Nice. Wow. I Very can. Nice. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you put it back together though? Yeah. All right. Amazing. Where yeah. did you pick this up? Not at the Fiat dealership. No. Um, when I was a senior in high school, we had a um, an aptitude test. Mm -hmm. And I came out um, uh, first with mechanics, second art, and third business. Wow. And, uh, 
uh, law and stuff like that, I really have to delve into. Uh, I, I was a, a realtor for about 15 years. In fact, I retired from it. But uh, I really had to study to understand. It's just to understand the words and the meaning, the real meaning behind words and all that, because it's so precise. Mm -hmm. Or mechanics, I could. There are times I could hear the motor, and I know what it is. You know, it just it's natural type thing. Mm -hmm. I remember. Art, Neil, I'm I remember. not an artist, but I'm artistic. Well, you doing the shower curtain ideas and all of that stuff is very creative. So I yeah. can see that. That's visual media. That's like sculptural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, it's wonderful to talk with you, Marley. And I, oh, I, I, I want to read your biography now. I, I'm, I'm oh, you have a oh, are you, oh, okay. Yes, do. Okay. I'll look. I, just about everything's in there. <laughs> yeah. If you want to tell more stories, you come back anytime. Yeah, we'd okay. love to have you back sometime. <laughs> if you would like. All uh, right. No pressure. <laughs> you never know, huh? Yeah. Well, I will read the book and maybe I'll have some more things to talk about. And uh, you're a wonderful storyteller. Well, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't I just very much enjoy go it. off on branches. That's all. Like oh, when yeah. I, in, uh, in New York, when I had the uh, interview with uh, the guy on time, uh, the uh, lady says, uh, oh, it'll take about 20 minutes. And I thought, no. <laughs> <laughs> We love that. Yeah. Forty yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we'd love to meet you sometime at a convention. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I um, I've only done uh, let's say last year or year before last, uh, because everything else was local here. You know, L.A. or down below. <clears throat> I live up in the high desert, uh, about one hundred and fifty miles uh, east of Los Angeles. Yeah. Up out of Palm Springs mm -hmm. area. Anyway, um, what were we talking about? Conventions. Mm. Yes. Further. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that we'd love to meet you at a convention sometime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and local people at a convention, something like that. Yeah. I don't know what it was. It was something. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm 85. <laughs> so. Oh, this and that's, that's something else, too, I'll tell you right now. That is something else you got to look forward to. It's a whole new ball game. Interesting. You're saying Aging. look forward to it, so that's a Aging. good thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You have, because uh, you've never been here before, and you're dealing with things that you've never, like, I used to be five foot four. Mm -hmm. I'm four ten now. Oh, wow. I'm Six five inches. four now. So, yeah. Six I used to be five inches. five. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Of course, it's all in your spine. It's not in your legs, not in those mm -hmm. bones and stuff. It's different. It's just different. It really is. It's uh, new challenges the whole time. It keeps really keeps you on your feet. And you have got to have a sense of humor. Yeah, yeah. I think that's our our uh, reviewer on our website, Todd Yeager. Uh, he says he lives in Palm Springs and he needs to get one of the shower curtains. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how he does it. He wants to get one of your right. Uh, he'll he'll run into you one of the, not. He won't yeah. go to your house or anything, but uh, he'll come up to. Uh... <laughs> okay, uh, I I I don't go on it very often and very seldom. But go on, uh, uh, go on. Tell you to go on Facebook. Okay. I have uh, uh, type my name Marley Renfro on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and, well, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah. pop up. I think it's Marley Renfro fan or fan or something. I don't know. I've only been on it once, and it's been there for about five years. <laughs> you need to you need to get someone to run it for you. Yes, I'm. Oh, that's why I'm working with a lady now. 
that she's going to work with me and sell, offer for sale everything that I sell at um, uh, conventions. Oh, nice. There's a different price. I have a, a price for conventions and then a price for uh, just, you know, sell. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. I believe that's who uh, set up the interview. Well, well, God bless you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, bless you. Thank you. And thanks for sharing all the cool photos with us, Marley. Well, oh, you're welcome. That's just a few. But anyway, it gives you an idea. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I Thank have you um, I've enjoyed this time very much. Bending your ear. Anytime. Wonderful. Yeah. We loved it. Yeah. Me too. Oh, hey. nice to meet all of you. <laughs> I'm sorry to cut into you, Anastasia. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Okay. This is so wonderful. And I can't wait to get a shower curtain and a tote. And I think that you should really make sure to start selling things online because there's a whole like fan base that you should be tapping into. Yes. A lot of people would love one. So take advantage of it. Okay. <laughs> Can I advertise it on um, your show, Neil? Of course. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. Yes. Let's know. Yep. I'll put All up right. a link right on the website. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah. And yeah. I agree with Anastasia. I think, uh, yeah, there's a, a conventions are great, but not everyone can make it to different conventions. So, I there's know a, it. you know, everyone's know online. It. So, yeah. 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 I get, I get, actually, I get about between, say, seven and 12 fan mail. And it's things they want autographed and they send a self addressed stamped envelope. Mm -hmm. Honestly, yeah. And I'm getting so many that. from Germany. Like oh, really? I now really? I'm mailing 12 out. And there's like three in there from Germany. There's Germany is every time I get something that's there's Germany. And I got one from Scotland. This first time from Scotland. I've had one from Hong Kong. <laughs> wow. And yeah, people cool. have your mailing address to do that? There's um, businesses uh, that sell people's oh, mailing okay. address, yes. and it keeps uh, changing. It's not my home address that they oh. have. Yeah, you don't need that. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> no, be very safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah my, really. my own address is very much buried in yeah. trust. Yeah, I used yeah. to have mine right on my Facebook, and Amber's like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, what like, you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's nasty, nasty, nasty. <laughs> All right, All right. Bad, Neil. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you both. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you so much. I've enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed this. I have as well. It's been so best of luck, you so All of you. But thank you. you do. <laughs> have lovely holidays. Yes. Yes, Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. Happy Merry New Christmas. Year. <laughs> okay, bye bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye bye. 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 All bye. right, that was great. Okay. Thank you. you want me to take? I could take you out if you. Okay. Well, uh, uh, well, can I watch whatever you do? You can stay here if you want. Yeah. You can stay. <laughs> you can stay and talk I... to Anastasia if you like. <laughs> She yeah, has totally so, welcome. Anastasia to. has so much that she's doing. I feel like I'm very boring in comparison to you, though. So I don't know. Whoa, the pressure's on. <laughs> You're welcome to stay, good. definitely. Yeah, as long as Anastasia's cool with it. Yeah, okay, for sure. Yeah, whatever yeah. works. Well, okay, I might be cutting out because it's dinner time for me. Oh, yeah. Tomorrow. Go Enjoy. I will. But I'll, I'll spend you the link after and you can watch yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to, you can always check it out. Okay. Yeah. How do I get a, Oh, I leave. I put the red <laughs> yeah. cross on the lead yeah. studio. Yeah. All right. See, so you're an expert already. Oh, yes. I think. Getting to be <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're joined by Anastasia Elfman. And it's very cool to have you here. It's been years in the making. I think we were going to have you on many different times. Yeah. I saw you posted about a month ago or so saying, hey, I'll talk about things other than like films because of the because of the protests, because of the strike. And I saw that. I was like, oh, yeah, we've got to do that. So oh, now you can talk about everything. 
I know, right? Now it's like, <laughs> now I'm free for all. But yeah, before we were, I was stuck under the SAG strike, not able to talk about um, our projects. But I was kind of getting a bit frustrated because I'm so much more than just like an actress. It's like, I love horror. I love cinema. I, you know, like I'm a total film nerd and a monster kid. And it's like, that's kind of my happy places chatting about films. And I just thought that it was just all collecting dust and going to waste because not every actress or creator is even a fan of like the medium that they work in. Let's say a lot of um friends of ours don't even watch movies you know they're actors or directors and things which i find very strange but you know tomato potato as they say yeah, yeah. <laughs> i always find that odd too i think they should almost lie and just say yeah i'm a big fan of horror movies right because to me it kind of makes me angry i'm like can you just like move aside and let me take over because <laughs> i i like i love it and i love getting messy i love getting bloody you know so well, like the title bloody bridget Yes. <laughs> um, I, I would have to say there's probably a huge amount of gore and effects and madness going on. Yeah, so much, so much blood and 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 practical effects. I I did practical practical effects professionally for over a decade. Uh, yeah. So I have a huge love of you know effects and yeah, film. That's yeah. How did you yeah. go down that path? Whoa! Oh, oh yes. no! Oh no! Yes. 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 No, they're covered up. They've got little monster uh, teeth. On them. Demon. Yeah. Little, little. There, you're right. <laughs> wow! Stop <laughs> shocking people. Wow. I don't even love that photo. Ricky, my husband Richard Elfman, who wrote and directed this film, um, he loves that shot of me at the end. <laughs> of the film and so he yeah i don't know and i guess it's on our press pack because people keep yes on that's it. where i I'm got like, it you sent it to me so, yeah. well everybody here is just like wow so, <laughs> really <laughs> hello <laughs> yeah in your face <laughs> um so you were saying that you were doing practical effects for 10 years. You were doing that. Was that kind of your road in or were you acting before that? Like, how did these things fit together? Well, I had a very strange uh, kind of a vaudeville-esque uh, upbringing. I grew up in the theater. I've been I'm classically trained in ballet and I've been doing uh, theater my whole life. Uh, mm -hmm. My parents were both uh, Marines. And then they really? kind of turned hippie. Yeah, yeah. So I have like a huge work ethic. Yes. <laughs> Along with the ballet, you know, it's like I dance yeah. on oh, broken wow. toes and you have to smile through it. So, you know. Um, but yeah, so I, I grew up and I wasn't um so military parents. I grew up on a lot of um classic films and silence and pre-code horror and things like that. Um, and I wasn't really allowed to play video games or like do any of the stuff that like the normal kids. So like, I feel like I've had like a very like distant, weird, like yeah. upbringing, if that makes sense. So it sounds like you were out of time with your peers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I grew up on a lot, a lot of, uh, Lon Chaney senior films and we also share the same birthday and he's actually oh. my goal and greatest yeah. inspiration in general. So <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's also. really different from every other child that I ever met. <laughs> what would be your favorite Lon Chaney Senior uh, makeup? <sighs> that's so tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do like you think just one? Yeah, yeah. Each one yeah. is so dramatically different. I mean, I love. I love his Phantom of the Opera. You know, I mean, I think Eric, it's one of the best reveals ever in a movie when he takes a mask off. It's so insane. And that, can I curse that? Freaking, yeah, yeah, it's fine. That Marley thing, already has. So. Christine, <laughs> like, what the hell? She has this babe, like, <laughs> wanting to do her bidding, wants to make her a star in the opera. And he has, like, one rule that he warns her about. And she breaks it, like, five minutes into, like, <laughs> being a guest in his beautiful, gorgeous lair underneath the opera. Like, what is happening? <laughs> like, I would have listened. <laughs> Don't touch his mask. That's it. <laughs> Let him take it off. Okay, that's fair, right? That was really extreme makeup where he had, like, his nose all... Yeah, and the eyes. ...with, and yeah. Yeah, he used really fire and fish 
skin. I mean, he wow. to me, to yeah. me, because I am very biased too, because I love him. But to me, he was he laid the foundation of horror and practical effects as we know it. I mean, when he was creating, there were no uh there were no makeup departments. There weren't, you know, that he literally helped to create that job for people, you know, it's just insane the amount of, you know, creativity he put into that on top of like an insane acting ability that he has, you know, like that, that alone would have like labeled him a legend forever, but creating his makeups and then contorting himself and torturing himself. Like if you, if you know your history, it's like for the Hunchback of Notre Dame, he wore like a 60 pound, weight on his back to really feel that and on some other ones he bound his legs and he you know he gave himself like permanent damage in his legs and in his eye you know so wow. it's like it's wild what he put himself through and as a dancer as an athlete myself i totally <laughs> understand pain pain is beauty pain is creative you know <laughs> yeah, the pain is temporary the art lives forever so. exactly exactly Harley, i see you nodding over there <laughs> Listen to this. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. This is so. Do you know Robert Aragon, Anastasia? He's an artist. I'm not He's sure. A, I'm going to write that down, though. A R A G O N, Aragon. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, a, was a good friend of uh, uh, Vincent Price and oh. uh, 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 the Lugosi family, the Cheney family, but Janet. And, is it Janet? Is no. That would be the other. Oh, wait a minute. I'm seeing. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> so what, 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 he was an artist. What, 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 what kind of stuff did he do? He did horror portraits. I just oh, found it. Portraits. Yeah. yeah. They're wonderful. Oh, amazing. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he, had of, right? he, had of, yeah. he had a lot of friends in the and actors in the horror. He, a, he was a good, good, good friend of Vincent Price. Oh, wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's and he's uh, friends with the uh, I don't know all the children, but of Cheney. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's who's that other actor uh, on the same age era there that did horror. Cheney and um, Lugosi I, and uh, I can't think. Here, uh, Lori's kind of in there too. Or is Karloff? Probably Karloff. Karloff. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Sarah. Sarah Karloff. That's his daughter, Sarah. And uh, Janet. Janet. Uh, uh, anyway, she is the daughter in law. No doubt in pa oh, La Quinta, I think. Whatever. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's cool. Yeah. You are so interesting. <laughs> Me? <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I love I'm obsessed you. with Long Chain Senior. Yeah. So that's like that, you know, whenever anybody wants to chat about him or her, like watch out because I'm gonna rattle off <laughs> all my like useless information that only makes sense in, in these kind of <laughs> <laughs> times oh it's interesting interesting it is so, so kind neil i just sent you a picture yeah um, i'm i'm uh, i'm gonna load it up here we got a picture of uh aragon the act the uh, robert aragon painting yeah. it's one of his it up. He, had a, he had a uh um uh, an early picture oh, yeah that's great so cool. aragon. yeah holes inside of the glass yeah, he has some um, uh, shared uh, paintings with um, him too. They both wrote, you know, painted on it, black, you know, pen and ink. Yeah. So, Anastasia, what? when you were doing makeup, like, are you self-taught then, or like? Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you you know, you end up picking up things along the road. It just depends on what the project calls for. Um, 
you know, I grew up in the theater, so it's a lot of like the community coming together and, you know, doing each other's makeup. And I also do like costuming, set design, prop making. I do foam fabrication, that kind of stuff. I actually worked with William Shatner on a video game, a <laughs> oh, Gorn awesome. uh, video game commercial. So I, I got to meet him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> small world. <laughs> yeah. Which is a classic episode of Star Trek with the Gorn. Yeah, so I helped make the Gorn for in that like video game commercial. It was very goofy, but you know. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, yeah, I heard. Mar really yeah, Marley's gonna go eat. But time. Yeah, that was very cool that she joined oh, us. And thanks for. Uh, yeah, that's so nice. What a sweetheart. Yeah, she's great. So, uh, Bloody Bridget, um, was that written for you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Written for me by Ricky, mm -hmm. my husband, Richard. So I yeah. really love that you call him Ricky. That's super cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and you, is it one of those names that only you get to say it? It's like, it's, it's kind of like a family name for him. Cause him and his brother bro, uh, grew up being called Ricky and Danny. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point when he made Forbidden Zone, one of the producers or something like that talked him into going to Richard to be more like professional or something. <laughs> right. But it, it was funny, like when we first started dating, he like kind of like talked to me. He was like, could you just like call me Ricky? And so I felt like I was like having an I love Lucy moment. I was like, Ricky, <laughs> like, how am I going to call you Ricky? And now I just like do it off, you know, like... Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter at all. But at first it was like, I really had to like, like force yeah. it. Cause, cause I grew up on like, I love Lucy. And so I was always, you know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <Ricky. Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> what was the funny thing of having this role developed around you? Did you have input? Was you were inspiration, but did you kind of come in and say, Hey, this is what I think about this and develop? It? Oh man. I mean, usually I, I'm like, you know, I mean, <sighs> I have to respect him and he respects me, our creative, you know, flow, yeah. whatever. But yeah, no, he runs things by me all the time and I give him notes like what I think works and, you know, what I think doesn't work or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he either takes it or doesn't, you know, it's like, yeah. it's fine. It's whatever. It's his art. I'm the same way. Like, I'll listen to him and maybe I think he's right and usually maybe he's wrong. I don't know who's to say. But... <laughs> But in this case, I mean, it it happened in a really weird time with COVID just happening. Oh, so he had the whole time of COVID to like write this. So like, it wasn't the first thing on my mind, you yeah. know, while he was writing it. It was like our daughter was home all the time. And I didn't realize that I really valued my like alone time, you know, like I love my family, but I also love like to have my space. So that oh, was, okay. you know, like that, that was to get used to, but, um, yeah. and then, so I don't know. I mean, to get back to your question, I guess yes, yes and no. Also, yeah. is like I produced it. I was really involved with the costuming, the makeup, the sets, all all of that stuff. I was like really involved with. So like, and I was in like every scene. So it was a marathon for us, and we self funded the film. Wow. So like, <laughs> it was a huge. We I think we did it in like thirteen or fourteen days, and it was just back to back. Like I was in every scene. I barely got to say hello to my scene partners. Luckily they were so talented and totally had my back. Um, but it was going from like literally every day would be like doing some heartfelt scene to some goofy scene to, you know, like leading up to like a kill scene or something. So it was like, and then trying to juggle being a wife and being a good mom, you know? So it's like, I don't think I ate. I don't, I think I only sat down to get my makeup done. Like <laughs> it was a marathon <laughs> to say the least, but yeah. it ended up wonderful. So I'm excited about it looks, it. we haven't seen the finished yeah. movie, but it looks awesome. I love the, I like kind of, you know, I like the over topness. I love the, the gore the, and it looks fun. It's not like a mean spirited gore movie. It looks like a fun movie. No, it's super fun. I mean, the audiences have been having the best time because it's right now we're on in like the middle of uh, a film festival yeah. tour, 
with it. So, um, so yeah, so it's not available right now. Will you be um, coming near Boston for this film festival? It will be in New York. So. Yeah, we're going to New York. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be in New York oh. on like Saturday or something. Like yeah. literally after this, I have to go finish packing and I'm, wow. making, I'm yeah. making like props for my new number that I'm doing in New York. So I'm going to like not to like spoil it for anybody, but I'm going to disembowel myself. So I'm literally. What? Making, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I we do like live pre-shows to open. Like I told you, I'm like a yeah. vaudeville-esque like showman. Yeah. Like I. I'm totally the school of like William Castle. I want to disrupt. I want to like do shocking, entertaining things mm -hmm. in cinema, in the theater experience. You know, I want to bring the live performance back into theater with these kind of like silly, silly things. So anyways, we do a lot of times we'll do uh, like a fun pre-show where Ricky does music opening and then I'll do like a wild uh, bloody burlesque routine. And so in, New York at Shockfest, I uh, they requested a second one, so I'm doing my normal uh, bloody burlesque, and then I made a new one just for Shockfest. So, anyways, so it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. <laughs> well, that's very exciting. Yeah, is this gonna be recorded where people can see it, or is it gonna be secret? Well, I mean. I know I was just starting to think I was like okay how do we keep this going because I love the like we put so much work into these performances mm -hmm. and wow. go to different places and also like we we tap into local talent and like showcase yeah. them and get to like promote them as well which is really great I, I love connecting I love artists and giving yeah. platforms for you know anybody but um so there have been some recordings and then I'm waiting on, you know, it's like when you're doing these things, it's like sometimes you're waiting for stuff. So I hope to compile like some kind of video, like a quick, you know, edit or something of, I don't know, something. Something. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there is something, there is something special about like uh, you're there. Oh, the people there live see it. And I know it's cool to keep it forever for everyone else, but there's something special about I was there and I saw it, you know, and you can't just go and see it everywhere else. Oh, totally. I mean, I come from the stage and I love a live audience because you can feel it. You can feel when you have them, in my case, by the heart, because usually I have a victim where I grab and I take their heart and eat their <laughs> heart out. <laughs> Um, so you can feel it. And every audience that we've brought the film to, to, to watch, they've just had the, like, they've had the best time and cheering for the kills and cheering, uh, you know, just for like, it's, it's always like different moments. You think, you know, the film, cause like I've seen it a few times. Right. And I like to watch yeah. it with an audience cause it's like an engaging thing. Like people love it. Uh, and so like, sometimes they'll surprise me and they'll like cheer for moments where I'm like, I don't know, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it's great. And also it's like, it's a very strong, like, okay. So on the top, on the top layer, it's like a very like wild, maybe, I mean, Ricky would hate this. He likes, he doesn't like camp, like the word campy, but I would say like, it's a little campy kind of like, almost like an evil dead kind of vibe, which I yeah. love, you yeah. know, cause I love those type of films. But so on the top level, it feels like something like that. But when you think about the story, it's a total like women empowerment and a super inclusive film. And the thing that I find that um, people are kind of missing, it's like they say that we're not PC, but we're like actually very PC. And it's like we let, I think because audiences aren't used to seeing bad guys be bad guys anymore. And in our mm -hmm. film, we let the bad, the racist, the really bad people be bad so that you're rooting for bloody bridget to seek revenge and kill him you know i think there's a difference where where people think uh pc and then like what people think is some people awoke is overused the term but like um there's a difference between the two so and i always agree with that when i know people said like they're against um uh, rudolph the Ro red nose reindeer because like there's bullying in the movie or in, in the story <laughs> But it's like, oh, no. but that's the, the he has to overcome that. 
So if, if, he, how do you if tell that wasn't story? in there, he doesn't overcome anything. So yeah, what would be you, the story? There wouldn't yeah, be exactly. any. Overcomes to then hang out with the bullies. So, but still, still, there has to be. Uh, a, I or there has to be a villain of some. You, if you have no, the idea of uh, yeah, you don't want like a racist hero in in, in a story. No, Th- then it would be a problem. But if that. they're the villain. <laughs> Uh, yeah. you know, you have to have a, you have to have something evil about the villain, something, you know, that's, that's a vile or, or yeah. You know. And I think that's the tricky part. It's like a lot of like, um, uh, not a lot, but some critics or some people where I, you know, like on podcasts, I'll hear them say like, oh, it's not PC. And it's like, actually it is like, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, you're not used to seeing bad guys be bad guys anymore. Yeah. So it's like, we take care of business, not no spoilers, but <laughs> yeah. well, it sounds like you you make a target out of things that you actually find horrible, like in life. Yeah, of, target, of I've users. Made it into, like that's yeah. like that artistic being able to get things out. Like that's the true getting into your art is getting things out of yourself. And if you've made this like target to go at, I think that's fantastic. And I think it can represent that for a lot of other people is the idea of being able to have that vicarious experience watching something. Now, I haven't seen it, but just assuming from what you're saying about you've made this like horrible racist asshole. Yeah, there's many. There's like six bad, let's say like bad guys, you know, and they're all they all have their own like major bad issues, you know, like abuse, rape uh you know they're racist they're like all get all kind yeah. the bad the bad things you know they yeah. check off those legs and it's like, kind of thing exactly yeah. and so she gets her revenge and you know the world is better for it let's say yeah. and yeah i've actually a lot of we've we've traveled with this film all over from the south of brazil to to like north canada and all, everywhere in between and i've been like mobbed by People, like fans who have watched the film telling me, you know, that the, that the story resonates with them and, you know, just all kinds of really nice things, which I love because it's like, I, you know, I, I, I love that there's like a character, you know, that's, even though it seems silly and the character sometimes, I mean, there's like two aspects to, to Bridget in Bloody Bridget. It's like, there's demon Bridget and then there's regular Bridget, you know? And so like, One's a little silly and the other one's kind of like demon, but a little silly. She has silly catchphrases and stuff as she's like scolding the bad guys when she's like mm-hmm. ripping their hearts out and eating them while they die. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a uh, thing I like about genre film stories is on the surface, you can enjoy it for the, the gore or the comedy, whatever. But uh, you can also put messages and stuff underneath that. Yeah, I mean, it's not preachy. It's a right. really good time. It's like you want to get a drink or whatever anybody's preference, it, you know, like a, a naughty snack, whatever. But you want to have something fun, whatever that is, and just like enjoy it. You know, it's it's a fun, wacky film. And mm-hmm. it's, a cl- it's, a, it's a new classic Richard Elfman original. And because we self-funded it, he's allowed to have his full artistic expression without being watered down by anyone, including yeah. myself. <laughs> Cause I was busy. <laughs> no, when you're, when you're traveling with all, cause you said you're going to, we don't want to spoil what you're doing at, uh, at the convent, at the festival. I might have already done it. Oops. Right, right. But uh, <laughs> I assume you have like props and like uh, fake blood and stuff. Does that ever, when you're traveling, like at the airport, does does anyone ever, does that ever get like caught? And like, what what is this? What what do you oh, have? Oh man, uh, so far, I mean, so far, so good. Uh, <laughs> I, I I check those items, <laughs> so, uh-huh. and then I'll like sometimes um I'll bring. I mean, it depends. Some some festivals they're able to get their hands on some stage blood. Sometimes okay. I need to bring it myself. You know, there's like aspects, and I do a balloon number, so it's like, you know, it's it's a smaller transition. I've got like a fake knife, but it, the close up it obviously looks like a fake knife. You know, it's but uh, the heart. You know, I write like fake heart or or like fake blood, <laughs> stage blood. <laughs> And please don't take. That's what I'm like. I'll write on stuff just in case. But so far, so I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We found it earlier. Apparently, in Psycho, they actually you had a real knife during the the shower scene, which is yeah. kind of insane to think about. Yeah. yeah, she showed like a 
picture, like a still, and it's the torso and the and the belly button, and there's like a knife. And e I don't care if they flip it backwards or not, but it's like pressed. Yeah. It oh was man. Very intense. Yeah. It's a different time, I guess, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Uh, so ha um, the burlesque shows at the festivals, like how do the audiences uh, react to that? Because it's, it's much different th than um, what I'm used to at, at a festival. Well, I try to promote them as much as I can, but I, I find that not everybody reads things. So <laughs> sometimes it's a surprise, right. you know, like like people look shocked. And then I notice that a lot of one of my numbers, I might like cover up, like, you know, burlesque, you've got to peel things away for the reveal, mm -hmm. right? You know, razzle dazzle them a little bit. Um, and so one of them, I start with balloons covering myself and then I've got a fake knife and I pop them, uh, you know, and so it's really fun because uh, I like to get, I, I, I I like to get it in a nice way, get in the faces of the audience sometimes. Yeah. So I'll go into the audience and interact with them a little bit and tease them. And mm -hmm. sometimes people are like deathly afraid and you can see the sheer like terror. And I'm like, I know I'm afraid of balloons too. Like, <laughs> it's the worst, isn't it? Pop, <laughs> you know, go on to the next one, you know, but it's a fun time. I mean, like I'm very... I don't know. I'm like a very silly person and I like being silly and goofy. So it's, it's, it's fun for me to like play around with the audience and stuff and, you know, and I, I, I like live performance. So it's fun. Yeah. Sounds amazing. I, I know you're in the middle of the festival run, so don't get ahead of, you know, ahead of, uh, you know, people should go see at the festivals, but what, what are the plans to do with bloody Bridget after the festival run? Well, I mean, that's kind of a question for Ricky, but as far as I know, it's kind of we're talking with distributors to see where, you know, what the best fit is. It's like because we self-financed it, we're not like in a huge hurry. Like we mm -hmm. own it completely. Yeah. You know, there's nobody, there's no, there were no meetings. There was no, there's no suits involved. It's like, mm -hmm. we love horror so much that we, and, you know, created a new original Richard Elfman, you know, film. So it's like, and a score, I'm going to plug a little bit, a, a new original score by Danny Elfman, you know, that guy with Ego yeah. Plum, you might have heard of him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember know, so being like, a teenager picking up the CD back when <laughs> people picked up CDs. Yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, it's like, you know, so basically finding a distributor or deciding what we want to do with it and then like letting it, you know, like releasing it. And I don't know, it's like we we make these fun shows. I, I also like touring with it because yeah. Ricky has his like, you know, Forbidden Zone, which is a cult classic. Yeah. Um, and then we have a, another film together called Aliens, Clowns and Geeks, where I played yeah. like six or seven parts mm -hmm. and i did like the second unit makeup and costumes i did a lot of stuff on that film but so we tour with those films and we do live pre-shows kind of similar to this but a little bit different too because it's a like a multimedia and i'll incorporate uh other burlesque dancers mm -hmm. and so like i'll open it and then there'll be like a, a burlesque dance buffer and then so i'll do another burlesque number it's it's like it's a fun time but it's really special for his fans because it's like who what other director what other creator is yeah, I love this their, idea. their film you know and where like the fans can get this like one-on-one -on -one special experience like ricky will go up on stage and sing his his uh part from the film you know it's like it's i don't know it's so special so i'm like trying to to get the word out because i find a lot with his fans it's like they're used to finding his movies like in weird like old vhs stores or like bootleg mm -hmm. copies but it's like things are now available online his forbidden zone director's cut is available on mvd and our our other films are available online too and uh, he's on social media and stuff. And we're, we have like this fun uh, community for like, um, for Bed and Zone on Instagram where we do like fan art Fridays. So we get to like oh, showcase fans like for Bed and Zone or Elfman theme art, you know? And so like yeah. it's a fun, safe space for other like weirdo creators like us to like, you know, see other art and see other 
other films or TV shows, like things like that, that were inspired from it. Cause there's a huge amount, you know, like there's, there's definitely been nods from like major artists, you know, yeah. like literally like quoting his films and yeah. things like that. So anyways, I'm like trying to get the word out. Cause yeah, <laughs> no, I, I love the idea <laughs> of touring with the movie. Uh, cause there's a lot, I, I like even just going to like weird little, um theaters you know that show like 35 millimeter films and not that this is in 35 millimeter but the idea that would be the kind of theater i think that would show uh you know do like a live performance for you yeah like we just came back from texas from dallas at the um texas theater the historic one and mm -hmm. we've done we've done the show before and we just you know that was like eight years ago and then we just got back like me i don't know three weeks ago or something it, it was quick but um but yeah it's like these older theaters have like the perfect like setup for us because it's like we need like a stage you know and we need yeah. like a nice sound and everything like that you know yeah, yeah. annabelle and i saw spider baby at that theater we did oh, amazing yeah, which yeah. was a really good time it's great yeah but was, i love was, that theater yeah it was wonderful and i think part of that there is like a community vibe to those old theaters mm -hmm. because there's so much attention and care just put into the development and that there are stages there because there were live performances there. It wasn't just a movie theater. It was a theater. So yeah. I think it's not automatic where people, so it's not like going to AMC, which that's fine. It's just a very different vibe to be in that space. No, exactly. Like I just, we, were last weekend we were in las vegas and i kind of i did a performance in kind of a, a amc vibe theater which <laughs> yeah. you know like the show goes on and it's fine and it's yeah. a fun time but i do like having a stage that i can you know stomp around on <laughs> there's yeah. like there's a little yeah, bit it's of missing like the character or something yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 and plus uh, uh there's so many um christmas horror movies and uh and not really so many Halloween. There are a bunch, but there's not a lot of Valentine horror movies. So I, I like that Bloody Bridget is now one of uh, a Valentine horror film. Yeah, I mean, so technically it's not Valentine. She just called right. a Valentine vampire because oh, okay. she eats hearts. Mm -hmm. But I like I I like that you thought of that, and maybe we'll start pitching it to be like a nice yeah. romantic, <laughs> right, right, yeah, <laughs> Valentine movie. <laughs> exactly. Then you have yeah. Every February you can uh, go on tour Why again not? with it. Yeah, yeah. that makes it sense. Works out. Yeah, it's, I think it's a good idea. Get her what she really wants, bloody Bridget. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. A human heart and a pint of human blood. <laughs> it's what every girl wants, I think. Mary Shelley kept her husband's heart in her desk oh how romantic <laughs> <laughs> so uh you mentioned you know um like in the classic horror movie so what were the movies that you watched like originally that like made you like this is i want to become a creator i want to uh you know make horror movies oh man uh it's hard to say because i I think growing up in the theater and in ballet and constantly creating, it's like, I felt like I had, like, there was no other option. It's like, I wanted to do all of these things. And it's like, as an actor, I could be somebody else. I could be, you know, it's like whenever I'd watch a movie, I'd watch Jurassic Park or something. I want to be an archaeologist. You know, I watched <laughs> yeah. some other film. I want to be that character. It's like, oh, okay, I could, I could. I could live and be paid to to play pretend, let's say, you know. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I kind of like that. It's not just one particular movie. It's just kind of movies in general or, or stories. I mean, I grew up on a lot of Lon Chaney Sr. So, like, mm -hmm. he is, like, a huge inspiration to me he also mm -hmm. before he got into like the horror like he grew up doing vaudeville he was a dancer he was a comedian so it's like we have a lot of the same kind of a, like a major like career path you yeah. know like the same kind of idea so it kind of i don't know it he just always felt like home does that make sense so he was always a huge inspiration to me it's like you watch his films, like I just, I, I'm starting to expose 
in, in a good way, our daughter, who's going to be turning 16 in January. So we're starting to watch all the classic horrors that I grew up on. So it's like starting to watch them again with her. And we just, we watched uh, Phantom of the Opera. So that's like in my head right now. But it's like you watch him and you can see the dancer's like mannerisms by the way that he just like points to something or holds his head, you know, when he's sad or the way that he stands, it's, it's all there. And then also... I mean, not to like go like total on that route, but like his parents were both um, deaf mutes. So he was very expressive and he yeah. had, and he, you know, like he would hi like hide sign language in his performances. Wow. To That's be amazing. able to co like communicate like with uh, Quasimodo and, and um, you know, Eric and stuff is like, so he could communicate with like those people that were watching the films, which I thought was so wonderful because it's like, with, I mean, I don't, it's like not every character he played was a monster. I mean, most of the time they were just outcasts. They were humans and they were just outcasts, you know? And like, I grew up with severe dyslexia. So I always felt like an outside person, you know? And when I was growing up, like there was no like, oh, let's be cautious of anything. Like I was literally told that I was stupid, you know? And that like, yeah. You know, that takes a toll when you're like literally trying your best. I mean, I don't know if anybody knows anything about dyslexia, but it's like I just learn differently and mm -hmm. I'm working like a thousand times harder than a normal person to get done the same exact work, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm not like dyslexia. People are actually massively intelligent and like highly creative. They just learn and communicate in a different way. And our yeah. daughter has dyslexia as well. So it's like I've like been a champion for that for her to not experience that you, you know what i mean like been very involved but anyway sorry to go on like mommy no. tangent <laughs> no no not at all yeah and i think there are i mean a lot of people who have like i grew up at a time where you know the same thing and i got called lazy but it turns like, out what is that? I'm so it's like well i was really trying very hard but i'm just not I'm not there, not on purpose. So. No, and I think we also like communicate in a different way, you know, that like not everybody is like aware of or can like, I don't want to say comprehend, but like we just like, just it's just different, you know, and like being aware of that stuff is, is great because like when I grew up, I felt very alone. And now with like the internet and everything like that, I'm like, oh, okay. So these are like, other people are kind of like me, you know, I'm not the only one, which is like reassuring in a weird way. Yes. <laughs> but I also don't like, I, I don't mind being the outside. I've always thought that made me special. And I like being like the weird, like little freak, you know, like that's my favorite. I love the weird stuff that I'm in uh, into and like my weird knowledge. I, I, I don't know. I think it's the coolest. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, we're we are fellow weirdos at the moment. So. Yeah, uh, I'm in the yeah. right place. 100%. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, you said the forbidden. Definitely... Go on, sorry. Mm -hmm. No, Do go ahead. On. I was just saying you said the Forbidden Zone director's cut was available. I can't remember where you said it was available. Yes, on mvd.com. Um, so there are distributor for Forbidden Zone director's cut. And so that's the version that Ricky wants out there. And it's the color uh -oh. 10 years ago oh, or she's something. Right. Yeah, you're right back. Did you yeah. lose me? Yeah, just for <laughs> really like a split second. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's a colorized version and he fixed some stuff that he always wanted to fix. A, a little history on him. It's like, he kind of, he went bankrupt making the film and yeah. And uh, so he lost all control by the time it was released. And then it ended up because of like music rights or something and ended up uh, not being available anywhere. And that's where I'm saying like all of his fans watched it on like bootleg copies. Yeah. And so that's why I'm like trying to like put yeah. the bat I mean, I'll be honest, out. that's how I originally saw the movie was. You right, know. same, yeah. same. Yeah. So, so another fan, I'm like trying to always like uh, root for the fans and, and always saying things that I think the fans would like in his ear, you know, to like <laughs> yeah, tour with the film, you know, go, go do a signing or something, you know. How does he feel about those experiences where on the one hand you are seem to be very, 
you know, you talk about loving to interact with the audience and this is kind of very natural for you. You're talking, it sounds like you try to convince him to do these things. Um, I guess, yes and no. I mean, he, he does so many things and he's a writer. So he's always like very focused on like his writing and things like that. And he has new projects coming up and he just released a new novel, which is like a Jewish vampire tale, which is oh, excellent. And I got, I watched some three. of his readings on YouTube and they're aren't amazing. They, yeah. They fun? yeah. Yeah. I'm really into like, this. Yeah. It's such a fun story. Um, but so it's just like getting, I don't, I don't know. It's like, we've got our day-to-day -day stuff and it's like trying to figure out like, how do we do special things in between being parents? You know what I mean? And like being with our family and stuff. Cause like, yes, we have these like insane, like public personas, but really we're just like massive homebodies who want to like hang out with each other and <laughs> hang out with our family and watch horror movies, you know? <laughs> So it's a little tiny bit of effort for us to get going, but like once we're out there, because he's yeah. he's a performer too. He comes from the stage, you know. Like I I don't yeah. know you know the history, but like Mystic Knights of the Oingo Boingo, that was a yes. theatrical troupe that he founded, and Danny uh, joined him, and then that after a while that turned into Oingo Boingo, mm -hmm. which was the like new wave kind of uh, rock group that was like really popular in Southern California. Yeah. Um, so he's got a little showbiz in him too. So yeah, and you can you can see he's genuinely enjoying himself when he was doing the readings yeah. for the for the vampire. Oh man, he was having too much fun, <laughs> <laughs> and with the live music, I mean, yes. he's, a, he's a professional Latin percussionist. Uh, yeah. So he loves he loves a band. He loves live music. So. And I play yeah. cello, and I'm learning theremin. Oh, yeah. What? Oh. I remember, you know, speaking of school, there was a kid and he came in for like the music day and he had a violin that he clearly hated. And I had so much envy in junior oh. high. So I have so much envy when people have these talents with a string instrument like that. Do you enjoy it? Do you play still? I play off and on. I played some uh, in the film. Bloody Bridget has a cello. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so I, I, I should probably, I should do it more often, but it's just been hard trying to get the, see, because like we don't have any backing. It's like, we're doing all the promo ourselves and trying to get it out there. So it's like, I didn't go to school for this. I'm just like trying to like, luckily we have really talented friends like you guys who have platforms to help me get the word out. So, <laughs> so that's taking up a lot of my time right now, but yeah. afterwards I definitely want to dive back, uh, dive back into cello. I'm learning theremin because I'm just, Oh, very cool. I love, I love, yeah like strange and unusual stuff you know and because people have been telling me because my cello doesn't have frets that I, and because i'm a dancer it'll come naturally so you know well hopefully <laughs> uh, uh maybe it's too too early but well would you will we ever see a bloody bridget part two you, yes he's he's written it so wow yeah so there you go. <laughs> but we've got to make the first one a nice big hit. That yes, would be yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. So tell all of your friends. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think it sounds amazing. I think your show sounds amazing. I wish uh, when Neil and I were trying to figure out the weekend, it was like, for me, it was not practical, sadly, to be able to go this weekend. And now I'm just like, oh, she left. She's like, oh, uh, there you are. Are you guys, <laughs> yeah. did, I, did I cut out? Just you're, a real brief uh -oh. one second. But oh, you're gone again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Are. Can you hear me now? Yeah. My daughter's yep. school called. I'm like on my phone. Oh. oh. All right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so you were saying that it wasn't practical. Yes. For, I, I I hope I'm not hearing right. For you, you're not gonna come. No, I we can't it, make it. No, we can't. No. No. Okay. Cool? Well, I guess That's we just have to find like. In my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I so want to go. What can I do? Honestly, because you're talking about this and I'm just, this sounds incredible. Well, it's a huge fun party and it's insanity. Uh, but if you know uh, like a film festival that's nearby, let us know because I, you know, we're, we're booking those. 
because uh, we're we're going for for next year so we're starting to like get right. you know and make announcements and things like that yeah, so. boston underground I film festival film. And yeah. i wonder if salem horror film festival would be a, a good route which they're one they're newer but they're a salem horror film oh, festival yeah it's proud of salem cool. Massachusetts. So yeah, you were, and, and maybe well, another movie yeah. that uh Anastasia is in has just uh, is trying to get into that festival too. Maybe, oh, can maybe you the have final a festival it, it plays at. So that would be uh, good if that would work out. Ooh, that would be perfect. A double. <laughs> right. A triple. Are you yeah. able to talk about this? A movie triple. <laughs> um, like, I'm like not sure the ever, but I don't know why at this point. I'm free to say whatever I want because I'm not a part of the movie and no one can like tell me. <laughs> So, <laughs> so I, I can actually ask you questions because I'm just an audience member. I saw this amazingly fun set of movies that was Once in the Future Smash and um, End Zone 2. Um, End Zone 2. And you were in End Zone 2. Well, I'm very inspired by Endzone 2, and I actually took my stage name, Dahlia DeMont, from a, from an actress on Endzone 2. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's incredible. What was and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... and and uh, R Richard's a big fan of the of the of the character she plays in Endzone Two. Yes, he's a very big fan of of Endzone Two, like we all are. Yeah, yes, it was wonderful. <laughs> but was what a fun a film, fun. right? It was really fun. There yeah. was there was a screening of I guess one of the only uh, known copies, let's say, yes. in, in Hollywood, and I got to go and I. I was laughing the whole time I had tears. It was so funny. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was uh, one of my favorite experiences uh, doing the show or being involved in my small involvement in movies. But that was a great experience. The U.S. premiere in, in Hollywood. Totally fun. A screen fest. And I was glad Annabelle made it out too. And I was glad so many people involved in the movie made it out as well. Yes. But, and Michael and Sophia, aren't they the best? Yes, they're, they're very, yeah. They're they're just the best. I've worked on so, I mean, you've worked with them so many times. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a pure joy every time. And so, I think they're so funny. And they they write such funny characters, which I love. And I love doing horror comedies in general because, you know, like they're fun characters for a woman to play, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, who is, uh, Neil, who is the person that wrote that script? Uh, for Enzo, uh, yeah. Brian Ward. Yeah. Brian Smith. Brian, Brian Ward. Brian Smith. Brian Smith. Yeah. So that's very cool. So it sounds like you really enjoyed your time. It looked like people liked each other too. Yes. I've liked everybody that I've, like, with Michael and Sophia, they always gather the nicest and the most talented people to create with so i I've, I've always just had the best time you know i never i i don't even read the scripts if they say that they want me in something it's always an automatic yes like i know that i can count on them to like you know that there's a fun part for me to play and i and they're literally like my friends so i want to support them in every way that i can too you know so, um, I've noticed, I uh, <laughs> yeah, that, you know, when there's like groups of, um, especially like an independent horror, because that's what I know of, I guess. But, you know, there's groups of people that work together a lot. And I think it's, you know, yeah. you find people that you enjoy being around and have similar sensibilities. And then, you know, you, you want to keep making stuff together. Yeah. It's like, you like you can work together, you know, like they're, they're really fast shooters i like coming from the stage it's like i i don't like to wait around <laughs> i'll do it but maybe i don't yeah. like it because it's like you know you feel the moment and it's like you want to get going but yeah. i find that they've like everything that i've dealt with with them has always been really wonderful pace and a really wonderful like vibe on set and i've always mm -hmm. felt like very safe in their hands you know how did you meet how did you start working together oh man how do we meet i think they 
we were like friends on like a Facebook or something silly and they needed they needed like a blonde or they needed somebody and I was like I'll do it because I, <laughs> I I like being in weird films and yeah. you oh. know um and so so yeah so I got the part and then I don't I don't know I just like kind of fell in love with them because they're so cool <laughs> and then so we made that film and then we made like you know a handful of others afterwards so Sophia is super 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 talented Michael is too but like I really respect Sophia a lot she just does so much so yeah much. she's amazing yeah we just did like well not just it was like maybe a year ago or something we did like a little tiny like I had a concept in my head I was like are you down to like shoot this and we did like a little music video type I don't know just like yeah. a weird concept kind of art thing to one of my one of Danny's uh new songs and so she like killed it she I didn't have a total like idea of the concept and she like totally like supported me through the process and we yeah. shot it at their at their place and she had all the gear and lighting and she edited mm -hmm. it and everything so she's just She's so, I mean, they're both very, very talented yes. people. Absolutely. So we're so lucky to, to know them. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're originally from out here in, Bo in the Boston area, but I actually well, I didn't meet Sophia. In until, well, you're right, you're right. But they lived in Boston for the majority of their, but I actually didn't meet Sophia until she moved to LA, even though I'm from the area. Yeah. Oh, how funny. Yeah. I met Michael once. Well, I met Michael with you once. You met right. him. Yeah, that was the first time right? I met him. Yeah. Really? No kidding. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we all had a nice vegan dinner. Yeah, yeah. And then they went like pretty quick after that. But it's always nice to hear about um, people creating these communities and groups together and then seeing, like, just hearing about how you develop these connections with other people and how it grows and becomes more and more community and people, um, like Neil was saying, it's almost like ensemble kind of groups of people. That yeah, there, there's there? definitely like com like uh, little communities within like the horror community in general of people who connect and who create together a lot. Um, like we we do a lot of like live performances we uh, ricky and i have a, a band with ego um called mambo diabolico and so we'll have like live performances yeah it's like a it's a fun time and then we also host these fun um like kind of art salon underground uh dinners where ricky well we have like 100 people over to the house and He'll, he's a grill master and so he'll grill up on our roof deck under the Hollywood sign and so we'll have people over for dinner and drinks and then like I'll surprise them with like a, a live demon performance or something with my um, creative partner Morgan Soren. He's, yeah. he's so talented and so we do like a live performance and a lot of times Michael and Sophia have like captured these like parties and performances and things like that and then also the point of the parties a lot of times are like to connect our creative friends because I believe in like like bonding over whatever it is you know and then sending my friends out to create on their own you know and so like also it's like when our friends need people to shoot their events we'll like suggest both yeah. of them to go you know it's like it's yeah. like you know, you've got to have like each other's back out here, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's really inspiring. I've, I've, I've personally found that going to film festivals and events like that, I find like really invigorate me to create. Like every mm -hmm. time I go, I'm just like, wow, I need to do things. <laughs> I feel really great. It's always a wonderful experience. Yeah, I'm connected with a big um, horror festival here in LA called uh, the Etheria Film Night. And oh. so we host their dinner, their director's dinner. So it's like, it's for women and, and genre. Yeah. And uh, so we we generally host their director's dinners. And that's one of the, we, we have them over. So it's like 25 or 30, like, uh, female directors of genre films going through like the the festival and uh so we'll do like the dinner and then I'll do a performance and like Sophia's come over and like filmed the event and stuff like that so I love I I, I love uplifting you know creators yeah and connecting them you know and exposing yeah. them to like my friends and my art and their art you know yeah, yeah. 
and not change the subject, but you brought up uh, grill master. And there's oftentimes I see Richard's post on Facebook of the like, different grilled meats and makes me very envious. Of, uh... Yes. Yes. <laughs> he, he does a lot of grilling. Uh, I'm personally a vegetarian. I, yeah. so it's all wasted on me. I right, know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I he know. But that's what we have for you. <laughs> he he grills veggies oh. and tofu and and he'll he'll warm up like a goat cheese and stuff for me. So mm -hmm. I'm taken care of, but the meat part I feel bad because I wish I liked it. But I grew up a very strict vegan, so I just never developed the taste palette for it. I will know? say when whenever I'm out in LA, um and you know, I'm if I'm with Michael Sophia, usually I'm usually with them and so it's all vegan food. But it's always great. Uh, in my mind, going in, I'm like, oh, this is probably not going to be good stuff. But it's always great food, especially like in places that have a lot. Of, like around here, I can't get vegan anywhere. It would be like a salad, a side salad. And even that's probably not vegan because it's probably loaded with bacon and cheese and everything. But but uh, but out, about in L.A., you can eat very well and have vegan food. Yeah, yeah. And our, our dinner parties, because we host a lot, and that's a majority of how we, we do business is uh, yeah. creating a bond and have breaking, literally breaking bread with creatives that we want to work with, and uh, which is an art form that, you know, you don't see a lot of times anymore, but it's like inviting mm -hmm. them to our home under, you know, a full moon or whatever with a fire on our, our roof at a roof deck fireplace. Uh, but we have people who have all kinds of like fun food preferences, let's say. So it, it's never a problem if somebody's like a vegan, I'll, sure. you know, like mm -hmm. go out of my way to make sure that everybody feel like can yeah. eat. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Cause yeah. as a vegetarian, I'll, I have to say when I go to dinner parties or if I go to, to, to like, even I don't, I don't want to put my family on blast, but even like with Thanksgiving, it's like, I guess I'll just eat all of the side. Like, <laughs> right. I'll, like, I'll, food. I'll, like, I guess I'll have some I green beans. A and, main yeah. meal. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's very sad. <laughs> I know. Our poor vegetarians. We're yeah. always forgotten. <laughs> well, I know I traveling with Michael Sophia, some that. places they had to just get like a hummus plate was like yeah. the only thing that was on the menu. So yeah, but it's well, they are always taken care of when they're here. <laughs> I'll go to like Whole Foods or Bristol Farms or something, and you know, like have something made for them, you mm -hmm. know. But yeah, but I've also had vegans who completely change, and I've like literally like gotten food for them, and they'll go to the dark side and have Ricky's cedar plain grilled salmon. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know how much time no, I <laughs> Like, really? I guess I'll eat it. <laughs> like, he's yeah, it's not even like cheating a so little bit. Like, I'll have some honey or something, but you're having a big grilled steak. Is, is no, a, he literally yeah. has like a full, like, <laughs> like if you can imagine, like a full plank and oh. a full, like a huge salmon like butterflied and he puts it on the grill and he grills it on the cedar board plank and he'll literally get these okay. huge uh okay. like i'm not i don't eat meat like so i don't steak, know what they're steak. called but like a big steak thing with like a yeah. t-bone or something i don't I know think it it's has a tomahawk big... chop there yeah. we go tomahawk yeah. that's it and he'll literally because our house is over 100 years old so we have a roof deck fireplace that probably would not be okay anymore, but we <laughs> grandfathered it in, right? Um, and so he'll throw them on the fire. I'll, I'll send you guys a video of it, but yeah. it's, it's so wild. And it like, it always surprises like the the guests. And especially like if he's having a guy's night, like the guys go nuts for it. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So yes, we'll have you guys over when, when, yeah. when, you, when you're in oh, town, yeah. please let me know. Give me a heads up. We'll, we'll create like a fun crowd because we know a lot of like, you know, like horror people and I like connecting, you know, I hope yeah, it's obvious that I like connecting people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you do, you do it with food too. I think that is, it's like, there's an intimacy to what you do, this inviting and sharing things you make. It's, um, it's just so personal. And like you said, it doesn't happen very often. So yeah. I mean, 
that's our favorite kind of like business meetings is just like having people over and then you get like a sense like if you can work with them or not like yeah. me okay as an actress I am totally against auditions it's never good like you know if you want to work with somebody just by having like a little meeting with them you know what I mean like nothing good happens from an audition like I always fuck it up I don't know um but so I'm against auditions and yeah. I also don't like test screenings. It's like, why would you show your art to strangers? They don't get it. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you when I hear about like, like what was it, uh, Death Becomes or had a test yeah. screening and the audience didn't understand the original ending and they had to get rid of a main character. I'm blanking on her her name. She's like this prominent uh, comedian, but they totally wiped her from the movie. Tracy wow. Tracy Ullman, I think. Really? They totally got her out of them. She's nowhere to, she's like a main character and they, they ditched her and they changed the ending of the film because of a test audience. I'm like, are you kidding? Yeah, it's uh, almost never a good story when you hear about the test screenings. It's always <laughs> like they totally butchered it or the person like just ignored it and went with what they wanted to do and, and it was a success. But you never, I, you, I'm you, i sure there are success stories, but like you never hear anyone talk about, I'm glad we did the, the test screening and we got rid of this and that or whatever. Yeah, I mean, luckily in the case of Death Becomes Her, like it was still a masterpiece sure. to me. But I, 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 I like to watch interviews of actors and stuff. Yeah. So like listening to like Goldie Hawn talk about like how she loved the original ending, um, yeah. and stuff. Like you know, kind of like I, I wish they would like let uh let that version out so we can watch yeah. it. Again. You know, like if it was already yeah, just cut. Like, yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't like. It's like. Like why why would I entrust my artwork to a stranger where I don't even know what their baseline what is what do they like you know yeah How might not even be like understand yeah might not be a group of people that are gonna even go see it anyway so right. no, it doesn't like, matter idiots. what you think about like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah why would we trust them they don't know you have to you have to show them what art is you know like you can't trust the normies. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want them touching my art, you know, like just experience it. <laughs> so, uh, Maybe, when you, that's my high horse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you go to the festivals, um, I assume you watch your movies that are playing at the festivals too. So what kind of movies like stick out to you? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of just jump in for ours and then we go out because all it's right like, okay it's well I stand super yeah. quick like i'm lucky if i even get to see the theater before i step out to wow control. like i've yeah. done performances I, I, where yeah. where i don't even get to involved. pace it you yeah. know like where i just have to figure it out well i'm a professional you know mm -hmm. so it's like it's fine but it's like that's how much time like we have in the moment because it's like we got to get back home to the kid you know yeah, like yeah. all that kind of stuff but uh so no i haven't watched any <laughs> well except you know what in brazil mm -hmm. we watched um the original what was it i forget it was a movie i already saw so it doesn't even count it was mm -hmm. an older film but that's yeah we're not there long enough sadly but I wish everybody luck <laughs> with the other films. <laughs> I'm just reading the chat here. I, was, I don't know. So someone got uh, booted for something. I'm not really sure why. But... Oh no! Maybe they hate Lon Chaney Senior. Maybe <laughs> then they deserve to be booted. That's right. Get out of here. Yeah. I changed my. You're not uh, my welcome. <laughs> you will not allow that kind of disrespectful <laughs> attitude here. Exactly. I agree. I, agree. I don't That's think I'd really want to know someone who hated Lon Chaney Sr. Not right? Can you right. imagine if someone was a horror fan and did not respect Lon Chaney Jr.? Yeah, that would be the kind of person that would probably goes to a, a test screening, and so you don't want their you don't want their opinion. Idiots, morons, <laughs> freaking morons, man. <laughs> so, uh, my bloody Bridget. I know you have a website, bloodybridget.com. That one's easy to remember. Yes, but it's a little outdated because we set oh. it up really quickly when we first got the movie out. Mm -hmm. um, the best way, if you're looking to plug stuff, the best way is to like find us on Facebook and Instagram. That's like our, that's where we like to promote things and that's where we're the most active. We're, we also both have uh, 
YouTubes, but I'm not very good on it. And yeah, so. No, I'm, 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 to, to I just him. started posting stuff on Instagram more often. And honestly, yeah. um, like the, the videos and stuff get more hits on, on the Instagram, I think. Well, I feel like I've been like shadow like banned. I like, I just had this conversation with someone else. Uh, I like literally, I posted yeah. about this, and I was lucky if I got like five people. Where usually I get hundreds of people, and it feels like just recently with like the film festival, like I've just yeah. been buried. You know, like from promoting yeah. it. I, I I but I don't know. It's so weird. But, yeah, and no, I. Uh, I thought it was too old for TikTok, but I joined TikTok and uh, some of that gets a lot of views. So I should probably post more stuff on there, I guess. How was that? Because I I was thinking about it, but then I was like, I don't know. I don't want to do those dances. <laughs> yeah, I don't do anything. I did. I did do the. You, you can tell us. This is a safe space. Do you do the dances? I, I did do the milk crate challenge. That was one of my first videos, but it's a very silly version of it. I don't know if you remember that was a thing where people had to climb up the milk crates. See, I'm not on it, so I don't know. But we do allow silly here. We're very silly. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's like normally they would they try to stack them up like as high as possible, and you'd have to oh. walk. So the, the milk crate challenge was people would stack them up like as high as possible, and you try to walk over it without it falling down. And I literally, I was because uh, I walk a lot, and in a parking lot I was at, they had two just sitting in the in the parking lot. So I filmed myself walking over two milk crates just standing together. And uh, it got a lot of hits because it's very stupid. But. I told you TikTok, <laughs> TikTok, yeah. which man, you just got it. But I, I put up a lot of clips of interviews up there, and uh, they get a lot of hits. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I've been on a couple of interviews that are like, like based off of Twitch or something. Our friend Taffeta Darling, I don't know if you know her, but she's like great and wonderful but she does her like interviews through twitch and i was like what the hell is twitch i've never even heard it until i did one with her <laughs> yeah well which is, is nice because it's not as restrictive as a lot of the other platforms and you can have a lot of audience participation and as like a site that would like to it could make use of donations to continue like all of the different things people can contribute like oh, directly cool. as you're yeah. going this is actually the second in second show that's uh, yeah. also on Twitch. We're on YouTube and yeah. Twitch at the moment, and uh, yes. Annabelle suggested it too. The littlest things, like I don't know if you remember the trauma debacle where trauma got completely booted off of YouTube. Oh no, I didn't. Yeah. They lost all their stuff at the time, and there was massive appeals, and I think there was enough crowd outrage. There's no other way that they could have got that stuff back. It was madness so youtube is just has these very nebulous rules that they will throw it at random and so that's kind of a like a yeah i had to take a uh i had to take a nudity like a um what was it a uh because I, I played a trailer and it showed like a, a nipple for a second and so so we got a permanent warning on youtube uh for nude and they worded it very strange it just wasn't nudity because you could show nudity but it was nudity that was um, the purpose was to like entice someone. Middle eight and entice. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Ooh, oh, well, you know, nipples. What are you gonna do? <laughs> they're very, they're very uh, enticed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I had to take like an exam. Uh, oh. <laughs> what is this like sixth grade? Like what's yeah, happening? Yeah. So here? it was all these, and the, one of the questions is so it was so absurd. I took a <laughs> screenshot of it. And uh, I have it somewhere, but I'd have to look to find it. But it was it's it framed was, in the bathroom, right? <laughs> exactly. It was like, um, there was like Rob says, um, I love videos, or no, I, I find women hot who taste their own pee or something. It was what? a very strange thing. <laughs> and then it's like, so I he uploaded a video of a girl peeing in the snow, and then he scoops it up and ate it or something. Is this okay to post? And I was like, no, probably. Not. And then my answer though was incorrect because it it was it is okay to post urination if it's for art or education. And I was like, well, okay. Oh man, yeah. I would so not bad. put that to the yeah, test. Though, I'm like, sure if I. Uh, I don't want to to threaten the ancient '80s movies that I love grabbing off of YouTube at times, but they're full of just like graphic nudity and that still hangs out. So it's just, 
but it wasn't enticing. Yeah, nobody was enticed by it. They were all like, oh, God. It was very educational. Oh, yeah, very, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but as you said, it's very nebulous rules. It's not really written out perfectly. And uh, so now I get all these videos sent to me from YouTube to watch, like, the new rules and all this. And the newest one I got, it was like, you can now monetize your video if you show um, breastfeeding with the areola exposed, but only if the baby is, is also in the video, but not if the areola of the baby is... <laughs> what? <laughs> it was very what specific. <laughs> Who, like, what robots are coming out of this? This AI. Right. Where? See, this is where I feel like we should be using humans for certain jobs. <laughs> right, right. You know, like we can't really outsource this one. <laughs> oh, man. Well, luckily in, in Bloody Bridget, we only have to deal with demon nipples. Exactly. With which bang. actually, I worked with our killer effects uh, crew to create those. And I we didn't have time. Uh, but I wanted the like demon nipples to like talk and like, make <laughs> noises, and I wanted them to like go in for the kill too. So that we're saving that little fun time for because they have little fangs. I don't know if you can tell, but they have like yeah. little fangs, <laughs> and so I wanted them to be little puppeted, you know, like with like, <laughs> rods or something. Uh -huh. Like <laughs> so, in the second one, I'm gonna really like. Really pushed for that one. <laughs> I love that idea. So awesome. <laughs> I'm just wondering just who's going to voice them. Anything. Was that, sir? Like, if you zoomed in, you could have, like, never mind. Like a little. Yeah, totally. I want them, and I want them to gargle. I want them, like, little, like, drool or something. You know, like, I don't know. The, like, the, the, the possibilities are endless <laughs> for demon nipples. Demon nipples. <laughs> endless possibilities. That is so quotable. <laughs> so I, I, I took I just, this... like think of catchphrases for the demon nipples. I took what? a screenshot of this oh, guy because no. this is the guy that was explaining to me. Oh, the this breastfeeding poor actor. child press. <laughs> 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 and then it was no. and then it was all about non-sexual graphic dancing and you can't have deliberate and recurring breast butt or butts. Oh no. Too many butts. <laughs> <laughs> and this he's taking it very like, like... He's, he's gotta be like one of the most hated people out there like, <laughs> like you know having to explain this stuff kind of like with like parking meter maids like giving tickets <laughs> you know like they've got to know that they're the most hated people <laughs> i wonder if he tells like, people about that job or does he hide it in shame and just collect oh the check? man wouldn't Poor that be time. crazy if like somebody who knew him saw him doing that you know i mean like oh my god you're the worst <laughs> he's like i know i know <laughs> i love it i i feed off of this the hatred. <laughs> so um how about your um you you said do you did a video with sophia um would you like to uh do writing yourself uh, write something yourself or direct something yourself oh man i've got a couple things like cooking so yes, I want to, I want to write and I definitely want to direct. I'm a very, I'm an older sister, so I'm very bossy and I have a very distinct <laughs> vision in general that Ricky has to deal with all the time. <laughs> so I think it's the right, you know, like I actually, I, I've done directing before, you know, like in the theater, I also uh, went to different schools like Stella Adler and the New York Film Academy. So I've like done directing as well. So like, it's just like finding time for this stuff, you know? And then, like, gathering people that I want to work with and create with, you know. But, yeah, definitely. Because I want to, I want to like, like, submit to these festivals, too, you know. Like, yeah. I think it would be fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, being part of the festivals this last uh, year has made me, like, oh, I have to be involved in something else to keep going to the Right? Festivals. Isn't it, yeah. like, a fun, it's, like, such a fun community of, like, people yeah. who, like, really love film and love yeah. creating and, like, we've met the nicest people and, like, also because, like, we we tend to, like, bring our merch with us that, like, is only available at, like, live events. And mm -hmm. so, like, and we'll also, like, 
give opportunities for fans to like bring their own like Elfman stuff, you know, like Forbidden Zone, like albums or Oingo Boy, what, whatever they want, you know, like I try to like make it so it's possible to get an autograph from Rick, but like just the nicest people and the nicest, like, like most heartfelt stories that I'll hear from like fans, you know, it's mm -hmm. like, I didn't even know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's cause like you're, I don't know. It, it, sometimes it feels like you're shouting into like, the abyss or whatever and like it's nice to like somewhat have like a little bit of an acknowledgement for like the hard work you know what i mean because it's yeah. like for bloody bridget like it was us and then luckily we have really killer talented friends and family who wanted to be involved and you know it's like it, it's such a wonderful project and it's like i want to get it out there to people and i i love that it resonates with like people who have seen it you know so yeah. sounds yeah. silly but no no, no. <laughs> yeah. no no it makes sense that if you create something you want to have people respond to it yeah yeah exa exactly i guess right <laughs> yeah it's good to know that you're not just making like you said it's just out there and no one really cares but if you know if people are caring and uh want to tell you about it that's that's the main thing. It's yeah, obviously they, it's nice to make money and everything, but I think it's more important to have people like into it. Yeah. And it's great with these like indie, like genre and horror film festivals. It's like the people running it really love what they're doing yeah. and you can feel it. Like uh, we just did Portland with Gignol Fest uh, and then in Sin City Horror in Las Vegas. And we're doing shock fest in New York and uh, another hole in the head the next day, you know, so that's why we're not seeing films because <laughs> we're going to be on an airplane. But like yeah. these people, they are so kind and so on the ball and like so great at communicating because it's like Ricky and I, we produce these live events and we're dealing with other creators and it's like, it's so much, it's so much behind the scenes work to get a show on up and running, you know, and we, we were so lucky to have like the incredible support of these festivals. And it's like a lot of the big major festivals that should be focusing on like the indie films, you know, like they haven't, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, uh, yeah. I don't want to name any <laughs> names, but I've been to some festivals and they're showing like uh barbarian or something and that's cool that's a good but like I'm, like they have like a theatrical release yeah it literally like, had a theatrical really release fair. the week like, after of, like barbie or something like that how right. is that fair for like all the other contenders like how do we how do we deal with a multi-billion dollar film and like you know what i mean like i it agree 100 percent. like i don't yeah. understand film festivals that don't support indie creators yeah. You know, like, because that's what film festivals should be about. Because, like, the other ones, to me, they already have a huge platform, you know? Like, what? Yeah. But luckily, we've, we've definitely made some, like, lifelong connections with, like, the film festivals that we've been lucky to get into and supported by. And, and the, you know, for me, like... There's some, I, I, um, there's, again, the community feel about a festival that, like, it has one screen usually, I think, are the best ones, or a couple. But, um, but I've been to some that's like multi, like multiple theaters, where so it's like fourteen or fifteen screens, and that sounds great in theory. But like no one's together watching the movies. You may mm. you might see a little each other in the lobby or something. But there's something about everyone in the same theater watching the movies together, and then you all hang out afterwards. And also a lot of the um a lot of, if you go to the festivals, a lot of them have a lot of recurring uh creators that come then there might be local people and and then everyone's supportive like oh yeah i come here to see what you did this year and uh to me that a lot of i don't want to say smaller because that's not the right word but um no but i get it. it's like indie yeah. you know mm -hmm. yeah totally like a lot of the ones you mentioned like those are the size that I, I think are good festivals. And they're, like you said, they're run by people who really uh, curate, you know, interesting and weird and independent films. 
and totally yeah. love the creators. Like I feel so loved and supported like through the whole experience, you know, and that's so important because it's like, I, I, I've done this show so many times. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. I know what aspect I take care of, you know, the dance performance aspect. And mm -hmm. then Ricky uh, produces his live music stuff. And it's like, we were a package deal, you know, that work together well, but also it's like, we've got an like an ongoing show. So I know, you, you know what I mean? And like having that kind of respect and support from all of these other creators is so important, you know, and they happen to be running really killer uh, film festivals, you know, and I wish I had more time to experience them like the whole way through because they're just so like our screenings are so much fun. And I can, can't imagine that the other ones aren't just as fun as ours, you know? Mm -hmm. You definitely have a unique thing going though, because you have like a whole yeah. show. <laughs> I it's, love that. It's very don't be disappointed if you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I totally I I get that. And I and uh, that's how I want it. I want to be the only ones doing yeah. these kind of weird <laughs> live. You know what I mean? Like yeah. and I like to also like I'm always on top of like trying to get the word out too because it's like that's what makes our screening special. It's like yeah. Ricky's playing with a band, which is incredible because you know he's okay, I don't wanna like I don't want to fluff him up too much because I've got to get him <laughs> to take out the trash later, but he's like an icon, you know, uh, like he's such a, like he's a massive creative icon in the culture. And so it's like, you know, like being able to experience that live and then I do silly things. It's like, yeah, nobody else is doing it. I haven't seen anybody else doing it. Yeah. So. I think it's amazing what you're offering. It's Thank really, you. It's, it just sounds like an experience when you talk about like people have the things that they go to and it just is like people go to see cats and that's a thing, right? Or people see blue man group and that's a thing. And what you're talking about is like so unique. Yeah. It's definitely like a full experience in the best way. It's, you, you know, it's, it's wacky, but it's, it, it's, it's kind of, it's, it, I don't know. I mean, there's not anything like what we do, so it's hard to like, like have a reference. But it's it's. Yeah. I don't know. I, I I feel like Bloody Bridget is like a really special film, and I mm -hmm. think it's gonna find its audience. And I think that you know it's gonna be a fun film for like indie theaters to show and have events and have other like do shadow cast or whatever i mean like it's like it's it's a really fun silly goofy film and I, I i hope i hope people love it as much as as we do and and see the, like the heart of it not yes pun no intended. Pun intended, pun intended. <laughs> but yes pun intended <laughs> i love the well, idea of people doing shadow casts at theaters yeah. that would be so cool. Or something <laughs> like that. I mean, we've got like a huge musical number and not to give any spoilers away, but it's in like, it's in the trailer. So I think I'm allowed, but Ricky plays the devil. So he's in like a huge, like huge, like devil makeup and stuff. And we, we all sing and it's just like a fun number. So, so yeah, who knows, who knows what, I mean, I hope it finds its audience very like <laughs> Like soon, you know, like I want to get like spirit Halloween, like big <laughs> and demon nipples for everyone. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So that's uh shock fest, New York this Saturday. If everyone's in the area, definitely go out. And if you're not follow you guys on uh, Facebook and uh, see where you guys go next. Yeah. Yes, please do. Or, or and, Instagram or wherever you guys follow. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. So what was the premiere like at Popcorn Film Frights? Well, that was the U.S. premiere. And technically US. the world premiere was in the south of uh, Brazil. Oh, sweet. But oh, but well. we didn't go to, to Popcorn ah. Frights, unfortunately, because okay. of the strike. It was right, right before we got our, our, um, our waiver. And so yeah. we actually had, we had it all planned. We had tickets and we had to like return everything, which was so sad. So I don't know. But I got a lot of messages from people who went yeah. and they said that they had a fun time. Well, that's good. Yeah. Did you go to Brazil? We did. A lot of travel time. It was like a seven hour flight and then a four hour 
layover and then another seven hour oh, wow. flight just to get there. So so most of the travel was just traveling. <laughs> yeah. Four yeah. hours you can't even do anything. Like if you're gonna have a big layover. Mm. And it was like it was in a it was in a like a airport where there was like nothing. It was so sparse and it was so terrible. <laughs> Not you know, we were already yeah. tired and <clears throat> you know, like just already exhausted from the trip. But it was funny, like uh, so that was our first screening. And so I went there. I didn't bring like I wasn't planning on performing at all. But uh, when we got, and I was actually looking forward to not performing because we, you know, like we do other performances yeah. with our other films. But so I was looking forward to not performing. And when we got there, there was like a, there was a big party the night before our screening. And so the festival had said that he watched uh, our film with Sophia and Michael. And he oh, said really? he was such a huge fan of mine. And if I would perform in front of the film and so i hadn't even thought of doing any kind of performance i had nothing with me and so i said sure <laughs> of <Yeah>. course <laughs> and then so like his uh so the festival people ran around town and got me everything i needed i oh. didn't even see the theater and i did a balloon number to open up the film and so that's where that started uh, for doing it before bloody bridget because i had yeah. no no plans to do to do any of that for for this film. I was just gonna go in like a cute, sexy dress and just like be comfortable yeah. <laughs> in my latex dress that I can't breathe in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but again, going back to ballet, pain yeah. is beauty, beauty is pain. It's all fine. Mm -hmm. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. So, where would people follow that on Instagram and Facebook? Your personal page, or is there a Bloody Bridget page, or? So uh, we, on Instagram, it's a little tricky. I have a public page that's under my stage name, Dahlia DeMont, and that's public. And I would love people, fans, people who want to work with me, whatever, come follow me there. Uh, Ricky has an Instagram too. And then our three films, Bloody Bridget, Aliens, Clowns, and Geeks, and Forbidden Zone, each have their own distinct pages on Instagram and each do their own stuff, which is fun. Like I was saying, the Fan Art Friday with Forbidden Zone, that's yeah. like a fun thing that I get to help um, curate, you know? Uh, so that's awesome. And then on Facebook, it's Anastasia Elfman. So not that confusing on Facebook. And then Ricky's on Facebook. And then the three films are on, on Facebook too. Because I, I wish that I could only have one, but I find that there's a certain audience on Facebook three, and then there's yeah. a certain audience on Instagram and never the two will meet. They will never, like if I shut one down, I would just lose everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you and, know? Also, and I've really been trying to force myself to use Instagram because I don't want to have to deal with there is a certain audience, right? But you can post on Instagram and it goes to Facebook. Oh, I know. I, I, I have, it's so complicated because I have like my, I have like a, like a private page that's connected to Facebook and I don't really yeah. use it. Oh. And it's just like kind of for family or like really close friends yeah. or people that I've worked for with and they won't go to my public page. I'm like, I guess I'll just keep on doing this for you guys. <laughs> like, fuck, oh. just follow me over on Dahlia. <laughs> Help me out. I'm an indie actress. Come on. <laughs> but um, so, so yeah, I've got to, I've got to, I'm not very techie. So mm -hmm. I've got to figure it out. But it's, I try to, or my team, I try to get like the things going. And by the way, you were saying about Barbarian. I loved Barbarian, and I'm actually friends with the actor who played Mother, Matthew. Oh, Lewis. yeah, he's I, great. He's I'm great. I'm very yeah. jealous because I love to play very strange creatures, mm. and I really wish that I could play could have played Mother. And yeah. um, he came to – so my brother-in-law, Danny Elfman, has uh, – like a Nightmare Before Christmas show at the Hollywood Bowl, like mm -hmm. usually every year. And so he came to that. And so at the after party, we have a picture together and he's so tall. I had no idea how tall he was in person because I was like the first, we've just been like online, yeah. you know, like friends. Yeah. And yeah. so it was like wild to see him in person. He's like very tall and skinny and yeah. <laughs> like looming. It was so It's fun. interesting <laughs> you say that because uh, I became friend. I had we had him on the show and became friendly. Oh, with he's him. so great! He's yeah, so he's great. super nice. And uh, 
this is weird to say, but if you just see a picture of him sitting or something, he doesn't look like he's like, he looks like a, I don't say normal person, but he looks like, you know, you know. <laughs> None of us are normal. <laughs> right, right, right. But I know exactly what you're saying. You, you don't expect him to be very tall. Then I, I see photos of him with other people and yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought he was going to be tall. Like, Ricky's right. like six, six, one. He's tall. And I'm five, four on a good day. I just t stand really, really tall because I'm a dancer. So I give the impression. And That's I'm, like, yeah. very intense. So I give mm -hmm. the impression that I'm taller than I am. <laughs> but he was so tall. And he was the perfect choice for mother. But if anybody wants to cast another smaller <laughs> blonde who right. wants to... Get bloody yeah. and dirty and weird. Well, there could, know. it's <laughs> insinuated that there's multiple, you know, multiple well, people in the basement there. So. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. I know some stuff that I don't think I can tell, but I definitely, as a fan, uh, I would love to see a prequel and a sequel. Like, we need both um, to, like, you know, see Mother's story, more of it. And then I want to see what happens afterwards. And I, I went in so blind. It's actually one of my favorite films recently. Because wow. I went in blind. I didn't know anything about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best. Oh, I, I, I did too, honestly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's hard to do sometimes, film. but it's the best way to. That's also why I like a lot of the festival stuff because I don't know a lot of, of about a lot of it going in, and so you know you're not seeing the trailer a million times. Yeah. Well, it's like I'm a real stickler on like horror trailers. I mean, we we did it ourselves. I wasn't in charge of it, so it wasn't my problem. But I hate it when horror films show the monster in yeah. the trailer it's like what's the point I'm like why do i watch you know for like <laughs> right. a monster movie and yeah. it's like i don't need to be spoon-fed i want to i want to have this like learning process yeah as, i didn't as even know there watching. was a monster in barbarian until you know it was you know, so I, wild it's yeah because so i was really into like these the dynamic of the two characters i was like there's What's all these bad? red flags that this guy's yeah. like bad. I was like, he's obviously pick... the bad guy. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, well, it red can't flag, be that. Flag. Maybe she really is. And then it goes down a completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's it was really so weird. good. Mm -hmm. I love that film. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> just so you know, it it actually they did a uh it was at uh it was at the world premiere of the Once a Future Smash and Enzo 2. And then they played they played Barbarian. At right, actually, the same time that Endzone Two was on, and so like we had friends that were like, "I'm sorry, we got to go see." Oh, see, this is what we're talking about. This isn't fair. <laughs> Even like, friends are like, "Fuck you!" Go see the it's big like budget it's, it's literally it's literally playing next week at the theater. But okay. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. Insane. <laughs> I mean, it's a good film, but yeah, like, yeah. also like what. It's got Even the people working at the yeah. festival, they like close down all the stuff and they put like, uh, they put like things up. Sorry, we'll be back after Barbarian because everyone. Was... <laughs> oh my God. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Well, I have a little bit of, uh, I, I like the movie, but I have a little bit of bias. Oh, oh, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. No. I, 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 I told him the same thing when, I, when we had him on the show. So, but he, you know. <laughs> Now I haven't watched series. that one. I had no idea. I'm so sorry. I've been so tunnel vision with like the film and trying to like, like knock yeah. on every door to like get you know like get the word out there. Yes, I'll do an interview. You know, so I've been like very <laughs> trying to set those up. But yeah. I definitely want to catch that episode. I can't wait. Yeah, it's fun. Is it up? It's up and yeah, live? yeah. It was. Okay, um, yeah, it was. I don't know if it was either late last year or early this year, but it's been up for a while. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. But he's very, very entertaining. He's so nice. Yeah. 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 And talented. God, that character. Mm -hmm. Sorry, now I'm gushing. I just, I just <laughs> love a weird character. Yeah. You know, especially yeah. when you're not expecting it. Like, okay. Really I found really the, weird. <laughs> there's like a group of five or six like tall like lanky guy who play a lot of those and all of them are super friendly that i found like on the show they're all very nice well that's perfect and I they love seem to all be, kind of know each other and you think maybe they'd have a rivalry because maybe they're like, trying out for similar roles but they're all very cool they're all in the mean streets like beating each other up <laughs> exactly. kicking each other in the knee one another. Yeah. <laughs> oh another man album. and uh aliens clowns and geeks is that also yeah. available on the same website mvd.com Yes, yes, it is. It has a special edition Blu-ray. Oh, sweet. 
Yeah. I will need this. I, I apologize. I've not seen Alien Clowns and Geeks, but I need to see this. That's yeah. okay. I mean, it came it came out um it came out during COVID, so it oh. like kind of it, it went under yeah. it went under the radar for a lot. So that's why we're like touring, you know, with like yeah. our, our other films to get the word out there. So yeah. And that'll yeah. Be, and then we could talk about it next time we have you on for part two. Ooh, part two. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I know. I talked too much about about Lon Chaney Senior. No, definitely oh, not. Did. No, we <laughs> love that. Yeah. We talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah. The um, worst guest is so if if you have them on and you ask a question, they're like, Yep. <laughs> no follow up. <laughs> Well, this is my favorite kind of stuff. I love chatting and deep diving horror. And I love, you know, like getting to talk about our friends who are like kicking ass in horror, you know, so it, it's it's a fun time for me. And thank you for having me on. This is so oh, kind, both of you. Thank you for coming oh, on. Love it. This is such a fun right. show. Yeah, thank you. I like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Annabelle's was off for a couple of years and I'm very happy she's returned to the show. Yeah, it's awesome. been, uh, it's been great. Stay episode. away. I tried, but <laughs> but I'm back. Perfect. Yeah. It works it. out for me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Here to meet you. Yeah. So we will talk to you soon, Anastasia. It's been great. Yeah. We love uh, having you on. We'll do it again. Thank you so much. Okay, have a great night. Yeah. Let me know when yeah. I can start promoting this. And yeah. thank you so much. Have a good one, guys. See you. you. Too. Bye. 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 And then she's got a pack to go to New York. Yeah. Now I feel really lame about New York. I feel lame. That's all right. There will be other times, but I, I, I we have if, if it ever does come, uh, one that we could easily get to, where we'll have to. Uh, yeah, I feel like I don't even know what I'm doing this week, and I'm tempted to get a hotel. Room. <laughs> Are you busy? What day is it? What Saturday? On Saturday. I don't know what time it starts. We gotta like. And there's no promises, but I was very sold by her sales pitch. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, it was a good sales pitch. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go. Like, no, I'm going to AMC. No. But, uh, <laughs> um, so uh, I've got some music. By the way, people out there, if you have a holiday horror themed, horror, it doesn't have to be like completely horror, but something weird holiday theme. So it could no, be you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, be New Year's. Yeah, yeah any yeah. anything of, of this holiday season here, even maybe even even wintry, whatever. Uh, and you would like yeah. it to play on the show, contact me either on Facebook or email withoutyourhead at gmail.com. Give me permission. Someone did send me one track that I tested these tracks. And uh, fortunately, the one I can't play at all because YouTube was going to force me to buy um, rights to, to, to play it. So wow. I can't do that one. I'm sorry. But um, up first, we have two tracks this evening. Up first is, I wrote these down somewhere. Santa's Dead by Strange Nocturnal. Oh, my God. I remember. Yeah. Wait, is this anything like that cartoon one we saw? No, no. God, but that, that, that is a pretty great. sweet one. Yeah, this I is. Uh, play that sometime. I would love to. I. Yeah, I'll have to ask permission. Oh Maybe we God, could. I don't know. That's so good. All right. Yeah. So. <laughs> so unfortunately, I can't play Krampus Not by Epitaph Romance. It's amazing. So, so I'll link. I'll link it. it on Facebook. So people can cool. check it out. But I can't play it on the show. Link it in the doop a doop. Yeah. But we are going to play Santa's Dead by Strange Nocturnal. And then uh, to close okay. the show, when we after we come back, we will have Sam Haynes. Nice. It'll be very exciting. Excellent. So uh, we're going to go to break. British people. I'm going to uh, use the little boys room. Oh, and, right. uh, How long is the uh, break we're having? Just about so I know. three minutes and 42 seconds. All right. I will still be able to. You've already heard it. I'll be able to hear it because I'm just getting refreshments. All right. And, and it's a cool ready. little video put together. I also made a new intro today, but I went overboard with all the effects and it did not finish rendering. I don't even know if it finished rendering yet. Oh it was uh, going do? very slow. I was hoping to have it for the show tonight, but it's uh, it was and it's I only find like three it hard minutes. I to believe but... you went over the top with something. Yeah, but I've been uh I've been up many nights up to like eight a.m. just messing around, like learning some oh, new video God. techniques. Damn, but it's man. it's fun to do. All right, That's cool. 
All right, so here it goes. How many minutes? great couple of interviews what lovely people yes they were great both of them yeah. were amazing and i like that both of them were interested in each other and yeah it was absolutely good. it was very cool when uh anastasia was talking about uh films that she grew up with and i was thinking like i wonder what marley thinks about this because some of the some of the historical stuff marley was literally around for yeah lon cheney but mm-hmm but yeah. still, it's like, oh, I wonder what her take is on this because she was there in the like. Yeah, the then she knew the artist and stuff, so I was like, oh, I Marley, I think uh -huh. is uh, is more uh, versed in horror than I thought she was. So oh, she cool. said she loved Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, both of them great. Love to have both of them back on. Love absolutely. to uh, hope we get to meet Marley sometime at a convention. Or that would be super cool. Hopefully, this assistant is going to help her with social media. And yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, I think she said it was the same person who I talked to, but when we were, when I was setting up the interview and she seemed oh, cool. super cool. So very, very cool. 
I don't know, Neil. Really tempted to go to that event. Yeah, I don't know if we could still get a pass or anything either, so I'd have to look into that. But how much would it cost to just go? Go. I'm not really positive. I don't know offhand. I'm curious. I'm curious. Hmm. Well, it's not off the table for me to do the big giant drive. So we'll see. We'll see. Is Neil anti this idea? No, I just oh. don't know. Um, uh, I'll have to tell you some up here. Okay. Sounds fine to me. Okay. So um, I did want to mention early on to get like more promotion of awesome things out there is brutalities. Yes. So I've, where am I? Here's my advent calendar. Brutalities. I flipped my uh, my used ones upside down. Oh, interesting. That's yeah, because I figured, all right, that's going to reflect the, the gone days. Mm. Um, so the first one, so what happened was, all right, so I saw these advertised online. I didn't know anything about brutalities. It just magically came into my path about these advent calendars for tea. Neil and I love tea. Neil does a lot of loosely fancy lad teas. And it was like, this is an amazing Christmas present. And I'm buying one for him. And because it sounds so awesome, I'm like, oh, fuck it, I'm buying one for me. So the first time I was able to give it to him, the month had already started. So started at one, because it's the first time I had it. But then I thought, no, you know what? I'm going to match up the days with the actual days it's supposed to be. So then it'll end here. And then I can have these bonus ones after. Yeah, for the new year. Yes. So, so far, let me see. What did I have so far? I had, well, we might have had the same things. The first it, day I had Decom Pros. No, that was number one, wasn't it? Yeah, but I, I had it that day. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. I haven't had number one yet, though. Yes. I think I had it, and then I was like, O'Neill, oh, yeah. let's do so this. I started at four, yeah. yeah. So, four... Cram Pistachio, what an amazing name. Decom Pros is also excellent, but I like well, these. My four was Cran Apple Corpse. Oh, wait, you had four? Oh, you must have started on the fourth. Right. Oh, okay. I didn't start on the fourth. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Uh, you, probably had the, you probably had number one on the fourth. I had number one on the first, and I think your number one was on the fourth. Right. So I, I had number four on the fourth. Yeah, yeah I think, you, well, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, so, and then, so you had, what did you think of, of that one? I loved Decom Pros. I love florals anyways. Yeah, was... Cran Apple Corpse is great. I'm a big, I like cranberry stuff. And had the little sweetness from the apple and the tartness from the cranberry. Yeah, it was very good. And I love now. Uh, you're not a big pistachio fan. I am. Loved it. So I thought it was. I great. loved it. That's a big thing. I don't like pistachio. I don't like pistachio ice cream. I don't like pistachio nuts. I don't want to eat the stupid pistachio pie bullshit. I don't want any of that. And then there was this pistachio one, and I'm of course I'm going to try them all, and it was so great. I, I, it was like one time I, I hated the smell of, um, lavender, hated it, hated it. And I had one drink and it changed my oh, world. So now you're going to become a pistachio so fan. I wonder if I like pistachios, if this opened the door for me. Yeah. Try and try pistachio. real. Yeah. You probably used to the fake pistachio. No, like real legitimate pistachios. I didn't enjoy it. Like mm. in the shell pistachio. No. Hmm very crazy you know. so we'll see i well we'll see now what happens because it was so balanced it was like not this over the top flavor the flavor was there but there was something in it to like just perfectly balance it so there was mm -hmm. like it was smooth it was very smooth i loved it and then we had uh um, what was the next day? yesterday it was watermelon. smoke on the watermelon <laughs> What did you think of watermelon? Oh, this was really good. Uh, I, I, I've, uh, 
I'd made two cups out of each of these because uh-huh. the loo's sometimes strong enough to do so. So this one wasn't a black tea. So the second cup was a little weak. So I actually added a little honey and um, almond milk to the second cup. And it really actually made the watermelon much more pronounced. Interesting. I'm so curious about that now. I loved seeing the little apple pieces float to the top. Yeah, yeah. This is amazing. They're these little dehydrated. I mean, these yeah. are beautiful. You and, just they, and they really plumped up and looked like chopped oh, up yeah. apples in. Yeah. I ate one. I did too. I probably could eat them. Yeah, they were good. Mm-hmm. But just even looking at the blends, when you open the containers, they're beautiful. There's You can see all the ingredients. I didn't even know what kind of, I had no idea. I just got this because I thought it was cool. These could have been yeah. total shit. Right. I didn't know. But they've been such high. Yeah, quality. it makes me curious to actually try some more of their teas, honestly. And you know, it's interesting. Um, you remember Jay Schoenfreud who came in here before? Oh, yeah, yeah. So Jay saw that I got these and he was super excited because this is the tea company he uses. He says he's never bought a, a, something from another company since. Oh, really? Wow. He likes the teas that much. And then so uh, today was uh, seven. vanilla biscuits, mm-hmm. which I actually have bottle. right here. Ah, I finished mine. I was I drank. I've been drinking it during the show, but it's it's very good. It's uh, you know, it's it sounds a little basic compared to the other ones because it's a uh, vanilla black tea, but basically, but very. I, I'm a huge fan of vanilla, mm-hmm. and uh, it's just a delicious. It's just a. Basic tea with the nice vanilla taste. It's uh, just a perfect tea. And it feel it's like a nice, like you can tell how quality the the tea itself is. I this one I also had a little uh, almond milk and uh, some honey too because I thought it would bring out the vanilla and it does. Yeah, I'm loving it just the way it is. I should not be drinking it right now. I'll probably not be able to sleep because of my caffeine diet change, but. It's lovely. Mm-hmm. I'd say so far my favorite one was the pistachio. I really liked it too. It was fantastic. Really I loved it. So, folks, this was an awesome thing. If you yeah, it's a great gift. Hear, you gotta like. I was. I saw that the sale starts at this time on November, or whatever. I'm like, all right, I got to be ready for this. And thank God I saw it and like was pre- able to get to it on time because it sold out. It wasn't even a day. I don't even know if it was a, like hours and it was gone. So if you want to do this next year, totally like be on the ball as long as you don't take mine. Like, because <laughs> I'll probably get another one. I'm assuming they do, even if it wasn't different ones, I like the idea of the, the taste test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it it's is a fun. good idea. I think it's good for them too. It's fun and everything, but also like, um, it's a good way to to get people to taste all the different kinds, and then maybe you know go and buy the ones that they like or try something that they think Statue. they like. Yeah, absolutely. So I love it, and uh, I think I will definitely be buying tea from them in the future. And I mean, if you if you don't want to wait the entire year, you just go on there and t- try some. I think they've got like little packs and big packs. So you can kind of get like sam- bigger than this, but sample sizes. Mm-hmm. So check it out. If you go over to Brutalities, it's spelled Brutalities, but the T's is spelled like the drink tea. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And all the tea names are really clever and creative. You just heard a few and uh, it's just a great company. They donate to charity. Um they were super nice. I wrote them a message in my order. Like, we will definitely be talking about this on the show. And uh, they sounded pretty excited about that. So, I'm glad yeah, they, they, they And they commented. Uh, I posted about it. They comment. Yeah. They replied. That was very cool in the yes. Facebooks. I'm glad they're good. Because yeah. if they weren't, we would have stopped doing this. But yeah. <laughs> I would have stopped talking about it openly because I would feel bad. Yeah. But they're good. We got Dave Deadman here. He's well, he Dave Deadman's uh, popping all around. He's in oh, both yeah. the uh, Twitch and on the on the YouTube, which is cool. Dang, that's what cool. is that? It looks like a, a pineapple. Pineapple and pizza. Oh yes, yeah. very good. Our favorite, my favorite. Amazing. That's when how jalapeno- winning is done. Jalapenos on there is also really nice. Very cool interview. Thank you, Pepe. Awesome. Thank you. 
both of them were. Really Sorry cool. if I didn't get to uh, everyone's comments during the interviews. Uh, um, Todd Yeager wants to Todd. voice a nipple. <laughs> oh, I can imagine them being, oh my God, like these little finger puppets. You go super in close, close up, and it's like some obviously fake prosthetic boob and maybe someone's hand could be in the, the back side of it and like poking out and like burr, 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 burr. does that make sense like are you following my idea I understand. yeah i get you okay because i i'm wondering i don't know if this is making sense but i see it in my mind and it's really funny I, I don't know who this was that says, I will not sign up for a name. I got done booted, boy. Howie! I don't know who this was. But... Well. I Try to explain that more, please. Yeah. Uh, this was also taught earlier. Three fun things for me in the past year, seeing Anastasia at the Once a Future Smash LA premiere, watching Aliens, Clowns, and Geeks, then getting to see Neil and Annabelle and Bill at the shoot. For Psycho Ape 2. Very cool. Thank you, yeah. Todd. Hearing there's a lot of movement going on with Psycho Ape 2. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It looks uh, like it's getting near them. Uh, yeah, I think an autograph. Like yeah. Yeah. Marley uh, is wonderful, but but by Sloots. Very cool. All right. Yeah. Um, I actually did write down stuff to talk about, but I just realized I have it in a different notepad on my other computer. What? I even squeezed in notes into the real note. The real one. I mean, it just takes me minutes to go upstairs. And... Together. Yeah, but I, I was literally trying to make stuff for this interview. But, but anyway, mm -hmm. um... So I can go upstairs and grab and transfer my notes. I'll play a, a quick video here. Sure. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. So, right. um, you know, all you have to do is take them and put them in the I real note. Copy and paste them. I don't know what you're saying. I'm going to play a video here. Hold on. What? I was saying all you have to do is copy and paste them into the note. And they'll yes, just yes, boom. Yeah. Right. I thought, all, yeah, yeah, I'll be right back. Okay. We're just gonna play a quick video. If the video, if if I'm not back by the time the video comes back, just uh, yeah, just entertain yeah. everybody. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Neil, you can't leave me alone like this. I don't know what the hell to say, folks. This is not what I'm built for. I'm built to be an interviewer. This literally my job is interviewing. What the hell? What the hell? Well, I'm just going to start talking about the news without him, which feels really lame. <laughs> Tim Burton has finished shooting Beetlejuice 2. I can't do this. There's like, I'm just talking into the void. I know there's people, but it feels like the void. Anyone out here there who can save me and write something in the chat that I can reply to would be a gift. It would be such a gift anytime now. I can't believe he abandoned me like this. Well, that is not enough, Todd. I love you. 
<laughs> and I can't even put your like little comment up there. Todd, I'm pretty sure this is Todd. Let me know. I'm a delight. It's very nice of you. Um, hmm. Let me think. I'm trying to think of anything. I got nothing. I got nothing. Seriously, Pepe wrote, yes, embrace the void. I don't know. I could do a mindfulness activity where I lead everybody in group mindfulness. You do a body scan. Does anybody want to do that? I can have you do like, okay, so everybody. Damn it, Neil. I was just about to do mindfulness body scan. What? Mindfulness body scan. Can you hear me yet? What? You can't say what when you don't have your head things and I was just about to do a mindfulness body scan with the audience. A what? <laughs> a mindfulness body scan. I have no idea what that is. Very relaxing. It's when you sit, like if you sit, it's a group mindfulness body scan. It can be individual where the person sits and they get comfortable and the person speaking leads them from like the, the bottom of their feet and their toes. We can do it with you, Neil, if you'd like to participate. Do you want to do a mindfulness body scan? No, it's cold down here. Will this warm the, me up? That's something you would notice. You would notice how, like, how do your toes feel and move them around and you work your way up through your body and noticing the different feelings. People really enjoy it in group. It's kind of is like Reiki. Todd. Todd is like a Reiki. Do you know this? Todd is a Reiki practitioner. I don't even know what Reiki is. You don't? It's like energy body work. That's my simple way to describe it. I'm not like a Reiki student, but it's like, like, have you ever had, if you have like, so, if you could close your eyes, I could even do it to myself, even though I know it's my hand. But as soon as someone comes in a certain vicinity, you can like feel it. Like if someone was really near you, even like the idea of personal space and how that feels away, that's like kind of the idea of Reiki is using that weird feeling and like do like affecting the body in like a helpful way. And I think it's because Reiki master slash teacher. So Todd would better be able to describe Reiki. This is my like bare bones, but mine is not Reiki. It is just you paying attention to what's happening in your body. There's nothing mystical to it in any way. And it's very relaxing. Okay. <clears throat> he does not want to think about it. No. It's not he doesn't that. want to think about his toes or in his arms. He's not into it. Okay. No. You do not have to participate, Neil. All right. All right. Maybe another time, audience. Sorry. Well, you um I I will say I noticed that the uh the video I was rendering is is it did finish while I was wow. doing the show. Wow. What are so you if you want to do, do the that? full body thing of magic, I could go upload it. But it does <laughs> it wouldn't make a lot of sense. I don't people I'm, really do want to do this. Does anybody actually want to do mindful body scan and learn what that is it is something so i am a therapist and it's uh something that i teach usually in a group setting that can help you like if people are getting uh you could do it anytime but if you start to like amp up and feel really like you're getting distressed it's something you can do to help like ground you because some people when they get upset you start getting caught up in your own thoughts um and you kind of like disconnect from what's going on around you because you're so much anxiety or anger or whatever. You're caught up in your own thoughts and it's really hard to be connected to the outside world. Some people like dissociate and really tap out of their body. So doing, <laughs> Todd's doing cheesecake. So this is something that has you like reconnect instead of being all in your brain in this big cloudy mess. You, you listen, you try to tune in to what the person is saying, the person who's guiding it. If you get good at it, you can do it through like to yourself to just be in reality, taking space, trying to calmly go through different things. And it, it lowers, it can like lower um, like adrenaline levels and all of these different things going on in your body. It like brings you down. So it can be very, very helpful for people who are stressed out. 
especially if you're having like a panic attack, something like that. Yeah. It's a real thing. I didn't say who didn't so exist. Skeptical. It's like, this is a real, this is a real thing, Neil. You seem very skeptical. Well, I'm I'm why? Mean, if people are into this, that's fine. Cool. Doesn't mean I have to be into it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel bad changing the subject. Changing the subject what? I don't know. We have a bunch of stuff here to talk about. Okay. Go for it. Uh, uh, the long walk they're actually making into a into a uh, movie. I, I, I read this uh, for the first time. The book, well, the story. Yes. Short it's story. Not being done by uh, what's his face? Stephen King's like boy. Um, Flanagan. Oh, yeah. mm. Flanagan's not doing it. It's uh, Francis Lawrence. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what else know he's done, but uh, it's a weird. Um, I don't. It's a. Uh, it's a good story, mm -hmm. and uh, it's very dark. But uh, it seems like a strange one to. Um, I know they've talked about making it forever because it's it's from the seventies, but it mm -hmm. does feel like something odd to uh, transfer adapt into a mm -hmm. film. Well, this is interesting. So a I don't know where great that... stories have have. Uh, been the same way yeah i don't know what source your article is from mine was fangoria lawrence um did hunger games which mm. is interesting um and there's a quote in mine being the fangoria one did someone who wrote this ryan scott and there's a quote in here the synopsis for the book in the near future where America has become a police state 100 boys are selected to enter an annual contest where the winner will be awarded Whatever he wants for the rest of his life, the game is simple. Maintain a steady walking pace of four miles per hour without stopping. Three warnings and you're out permanently. That's really weird. They kill you. Is that accurate? Yeah. Yeah, huh. you're, you, but it's not like you're just out. You're murdered. You're shot. Yeah. So does that create people like competing with each other and trying to... Yeah, so they start out, you know, people kind of group out into friends. Mm -hmm. But... Um, as, and it, as they go on, you find history about some of the characters mm -hmm. and then people, you know, still try to stick together, and encourage some of them where other people are trying to, you know, are rooting for other people to get killed. Cause when you, when you, uh, if you slow down, like I said, you get killed. It's not like you're just out of the competition and only yeah. one person can win and only one person can survive. So. Yeah. Did you see Battle Royale? It's um, Korean. Yeah. Even the uh, Hunger Games, I think, is a similar. Uh, yeah. I loved Battle Royale. Yeah. That, was that one where they're, you know, killing each other. This is, you know, they're not necessarily killing each other. Yeah. But... Yes. But it's still the, like, I'm thinking about the competition factor of if you do get killed, like, there's an island. And if you're, like, they tell you, there's like a loudspeaker that's saying, you need to get out of this zone and you've got a map and it shows you. And you progressively, the map gets smaller. And if you don't leave the zone, you're wearing a collar that if you don't do the thing, it, it like explodes and your head blows off your body. Mm -hmm. So they're killing each other and they're also going to be killed for this game. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like fans watching and cheering people on. And uh, it's a really good story. I just, um, I, it's weird because I think it's hard. It would be hard just to shoot because everyone's walking the whole time. Mm -hmm. And to keep that interesting, it's really dialogue driven because it's oh, people just walking and talking dialogue. to each other. I'm just <laughs> saying, I think it's, it's a hard one to film and keep interesting, I think. I think it's really interesting that the person who made Hunger Games yeah, cause it's so is similar. making the same movie yeah like he really same, likes, obviously but the he's same really into young people getting war. killed it's interesting hmm. yeah I've, I've never seen uh the hunger games i'll say that the new one looked good though the yeah new trailer was pretty good i mean i guess the stories are incredible um, yeah i've never read them or seen the movies so maybe i should good. check them out sometime yeah, I mean it's effectively the uh, like this says it's this dystopian world. 
there's um you know the rich are rich and they draw like effectively draw straws every year to pick children yeah. to participate and uh, i don't remember why it's, they paint it in a way that it's supposed to be good for society it's clearly doesn't matter yeah. but uh yeah <clears throat> with your audiobooks yeah it's a great out. audiobook long walk one of the in the original bachman books yeah well check out if you have a chance to check out hungry and you might as well if you can get it i'm sure it's available give it a for all yeah, um, I mean, there's been other um, novels that people made into books or made into movies that they always said was like unfilmable. So. Sometimes I, um, I don't. I was going to, um, but I couldn't bear it. I was going to go through the news that I collected, but I couldn't do it without you. I read no. a title and I'm like, I can't do it. Well, I, was, I wasn't gone that long. What's that? I wasn't gone that long. You were. I started like sitting there, like I started talking about that. I'm like, I can't no, do it. it. And yeah. it was like, I don't know what to say. This is weird and awkward. Audience, please help me. Oh, you could have. That's fine. But anyway, no. uh, go on. What, what else uh, here is? Uh, pick some one of your next news that you so like to talk about. What I started reading about was Tim Burton has finished shooting Beetlejuice 2. Mm -hmm. This is another Fangoria. It's by Fangoria staff. Which is interesting to me why some people wouldn't like take credit for whatever it is. It's, unless it's AI driven. That's interesting to me. No, oh, that long, who knows? That's interesting. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, right. The long awaited sequel will hit theaters next September. Uh, after a, full, a number of false starts and strike related delay or two, Tim Burton took to Instagram this morning. That was November 30th. So, like a good bit ago. Uh, to announce something that many of us thought we'd never live to see, filming has officially wrapped on Beetlejuice 2. It's done, they made it, and we're all going to get to see it next September. Whether or not this long-awaited sequel will live up to the original remains to be seen, but if nothing else, it's completed and en route. Burton's post was accompanied by the image at the top of this page, which shows the director sitting on one of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice 2's sets, one of which will be immediately familiar to anyone who's seen Burton's 1998 original is the waiting room, the waiting room in hell. We don't, or purgatory, sorry, limbo, whatever they call it. We don't know much about Beetlejuice 2, though we can certainly say, we can say with certainty that it won't be G Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian, another iteration of the sequel that almost got made once upon a time. I did not know that. Mm, a few things we do know are intriguing. For one, Beetlejuice will have a wife played by Monica Bellucci. Do you know this name? I'm so bad with names. We also know that Jenny Ortega will be playing the daughter of Winona writers Lydia Dietz and that Willem Dafoe is playing a former B-movie action star who's now working as a detective in the afterlife. How any of this fits together is anyone's guess, but we're admittedly very curious to find out. In addition to the names mentioned above, Beetlejuice 2 will also star Catherine O'Hara and Justin Thoreau. As of this writing, the film is due to arrive in theaters on September 6th of next year. Going to be a long wait on this one, in other words, but don't worry. We'll keep you informed with further updates as they roll in between now and then. Stay tuned. Hmm. So, were you a Beetlejuice fan? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I like Beetlejuice a lot. Yeah. One of the Tim Burton movies I like. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited about it. I like that you know he's back. He's playing Beetlejuice. I, I like it when they make these sequels to the movies from like d decades ago and bring back the the original people. Yeah. I think they're hit or miss. Yeah. I, I was, just like but, the idea of them. Yeah. But there's some people in this that I think wouldn't do it if it wasn't a good script. I don't think Willem Dafoe would have stepped into something that he couldn't really sink his teeth into. I don't think Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton's career ended up going pretty well. Yeah. Maybe he got off. Defoe, though. Movie, I mean, he's in like the Aquaman movie. He'll he'll be in some real yeah. shit stuff. Which worst person will be in shit stuff? Willem Defoe. I mean, he's in some really interesting oh. stuff, and then he's in like just gi a lot of giant blockbustery stuff. But when oh, I heard an interview with him, like he he really wanted to play the Green Goblin, so yeah. he had to actually fight to play it, which I thought was weird. Well, it would be cool if he didn't have the fucking mask on. I wonder if he knew that going in. He would have been. 
Oh so no! Amazing. Originally, it was supposed I mean, to be a real the the actual mask they had made looked great, but then they changed. Yeah, it was just dumb Power Ranger bullshit. I was so disappointed seeing that in the theater because it was like, well, I'm Defoe is going to play Green Goblin. Holy shit, that's amazing. And then it was Power Ranger crap. No. So anyways, he, Beetlejuice. He's the best yeah. part of that new one, though, when he, he reprised a role when they did the multiverse uh, Spider-Man oh. movie, which I was... Parts of it I like, but Willem Dafoe in it is awesome mm -hmm. as the, playing the Green Goblin. Mm -hmm. I did not know that. So he doesn't have Power Ranger look to him. Um, He might when he's the Green Goblin. But I mean, just his performance mm -hmm. in it is really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's more about him as the guy in the, in that one as, as opposed to the Green Goblin. But. So what do you got for news over there, Neil Jones? Uh, God's boy, there's so much Godzilla stuff. So we saw Godzilla minus one, mm -hmm. which is the Japanese one. And, uh, you can watch our review. We both, I, we both really liked it. I thought that was great. Mm -hmm. Um, there's also the show Monarch, which I've heard great things about. That's oh. also Japanese made. Nice. But, uh, Kurt Russell is also in that. So it's interesting. Oh, cool. Weird. Um, where, where can I've, people that, find that? that's where on, that that's on that? Apple TV plus. Ooh. That's not one. I don't know if anybody I know has that. Yeah, that's what I thought was a very weird one a platform for yeah. it to land on because it's not like maybe they probably paid good money to try to get people to subscribe to Apple yeah, Plus. I don't know. And um, so then we've got Godzilla X Kong. Yeah. And um, I haven't actually watched a trailer, but I've seen a lot of people talk about it, and a lot of people uh, were not happy with it. But some of their reasoning, like I guess Godzilla is pink at one time, and the, the people were pissed about that. He got like a pink hue to him instead of the blue hue. Hmm. I guess I don't. I would have to see that from myself. I'm gonna Google. It, I did Godzilla. not like the last one that had Godzilla and King Kong together, and they're in the center of the earth. And oh, that's Godzilla. fucking horrible. This is a sequel to that. Ew! No. Oh, so show, I think it shows them the trailer. They're like running out of the center of the earth together, like they're buddies or something. I don't know. It's fucking dumb. Pink Godzilla looks cool. Yeah, I thought I that mean, I know fine. it's not blue, but Pink Godzilla looks really cool. People are just mad because he's pink. They're very anti pink. Oh, I um, the cool. contrast of your rooms is lovely. That's good. Huh. Thank you. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Wait. Hang on. When did this come out? Wait a minute. When did this when did this article? I'm seeing like a an article that could be nope, never mind. It was written in July. It oh. was like this movie is not happening. Yeah, the, the trailer's out for the new Kong. I think it comes out pretty soon. There's so many horror movies that are supposed to come out like this weekend, but they're not actually playing anywhere. That's sad. This no, Godzilla right. looks good. This pink one, its body yeah. is great. Huh. Well, whoever did the design on this Godzilla did a really amazing job making it look like an actual creature that could grow and come out of the ocean. It's It really does look like a dinosaur monster. So, hmm. whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just check. Um, I thought you know I don't ever check uh Alamo Draft House. Maybe they're playing something weird, but I don't know. Mm. I don't see anything. All right. Um, what else? New uh, new Alien movie gets its place in the franchise timeline. The alleged titled Alien Romulus is set mm. for release August twenty. You find all this stuff also on Fangoria. Uh, I see it on your on, on your list of news you sent. Oh. Oh, I thought this was the things that you found. No, I have, I put mine underneath. So why don't you do yours, on. man? Um, do every other person. Fine. I think that's fair. Uh, let's see. Nightmare on Thirty Fourth Street is coming out uh, December fifth, so it came out a couple days ago. Uh, Todd Yeager is has reviewed it. Mm. I I just now got it, so I did not posted it yet, but. I'm always up for a Christmas horror film. There's a few of them mm -hmm. out this year. 
But this one's a mysterious and psychopathic Santa Claus visits a small rural town with a bag full of unusual gifts and twisted holiday stories in the film, which features Krampus and killer carolers. Hmm. So is this like, like um? Is like this Santa Canadian Claus doll, kind of it? like a crypt keeper kind of character? Sounds like that's what it would be. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, he hasn't <clears> done Thirty <throat> Fourth Street yet. He's he just reviewed Triple Xmas. Aha! Got which it. Which we interviewed uh, the director yeah. of last week. Yes, he was very nice. Mm -hmm. I liked him. So the alien ones. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right. Fede Alvarez. This new alien movie gets its place in the franchise timeline. The allegedly title, this was from the 28th, Alien Romulus is set for release in August of 2024. Uh, let's see. This is by Amber T. of Fangoria. It's been a hot minute since we had any concrete new information about Fede Alvarez's upcoming alien movie, aside from the original alien director, Ridley Scott, thinks it's fucking great. But last night, a new interview with the star Kaylee Spaney revealed where exactly the standalone entry fits in the overarching Alien franchise. In an interview with Variety, the Priscilla star revealed that the allegedly titled Alien Romulus is supposed to slot in between the first movie and the second movie. For those not brushed up on their alien lore, Scott's 1979 original is set in the year 2122 with James Cameron's 1986 sequel, Aliens. Seeing Ripley return to the fight, return to fight the xenomorphs in 2179, approximately 57 years later. Spaney also revealed more behind the scenes details after filming took place in February of this year. Let's just say, just say practical effects loyalists should be very happy. Quote, they brought the same team from Aliens, the James Cameron film. The same people who built those xenomorphs actually came on and built ours. So getting to see the original design with the original people who have been working on these films for 45 plus years and has been so much of their life has really been incredible. That's very cool. Starring along Spain are Isabel Merced, uh, David Johnson, Arch Archie Renault, Spike Fern, and Eileen Wu. So far, the details of the standalone story remains tightly under wraps, but with a whole 57 years of plot time to play with, it could really go anywhere. Uh, release date August sixteenth. Sweet. Yeah, that's really um, interesting about the team from the uh, from Aliens being. Yeah, because I really That'd haven't liked. I didn't like the last two, um, the Prometheus movies at all. Well, you're not. Alone. So uh, <laughs> I like the idea of returning more to the alien world, mm -hmm. which I didn't really like. I don't know if I, I I like Alien One, Two, and Three. I know some people don't like Alien Three, but I like it a lot. Um, Alien Resurrection, not a big fan of, but uh, I'm uh, I'm always gonna watch Alien movies when they come out. Mm -hmm. I just uh, think about people who worked on Aliens, and if they have not worked on Alien movies in that long, I would think that would just be amazing to be a part of. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I feel like. This is something they would have to believe in too for them to even bother to touch it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that definitely has me interested. Definitely, I would love to see out for me like a good alien movie again. It would be nice. Uh, let's see here. Also, um, holiday horror. Adam Marcus's Secret Santa is exclusively on Screenbox. Adam Marcus made uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Oh, I remember him from a certain movie, yeah. I believe, called so, Once in Future Smash. Yes. So uh, yeah. he made this a couple of years ago, played festivals, and then it never found a home, but it found a home. So it's going to be on Screenbox, nice. which is, uh, it's like the, I think it's sort of like the Bloody Disgusting's platform. So, uh, mm -hmm. so I like to, I, I just saw stills of it, a lot of, uh, a lot of um, deaths with, uh, with Christmas ornaments. There are many dangerous Christmas ornaments. It is true. Mm -hmm. it is true. And I like uh, Adam Marcus. He's a good guy. Mm -hmm. He was a real fun interview years ago. Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, he was we'll try to get back on the show as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's a great, one of my favorite performances in the once in future mm -hmm. smash. And mm -hmm. uh, 
Jason Goes to Hell is a movie I've said many times. I told him on the show when I saw it as a, the first time when it came out in my teens, I guess. I thought it was, I just laughed. Me and my friend Joey went to see it. It was just me, Joey, and uh, one other guy in the theater. And as soon as they bite into the black heart of Jason, the guy doing the autopsy picks it up and eats it. Almost like a scene from the, from the stuff, because why does this guy want to eat the dude's heart? I don't know. And I we just burst into laughter. <laughs> and the other one other guy in the theater was pissed the rest of the movie because we're laughing. And as soon as it's over, he got up and stormed out. And so I'd never, I always thought, oh, that's really stupid. I'll be honest. Years later, I watch it again for the Adam Marcus interview. And I absolutely love Jason Goes to Hell now. And Did I you have still noticed laugh at it? it. Huh? Did you still laugh? Oh, yeah. But in a good way. It's it's very entertaining. And I love that it's so crazy. It's, it's a batshit crazy movie. And I love it for that. But I have noticed that people that have a real heartfelt connection to the Friday the 13th franchise mm-hmm. are not necessarily a big fan of this movie. Like uh-huh. Jittery John of without your head absolutely hates it, but he's a huge fan of the Friday the 13th franchise. And, uh-huh. and I like them fine, but I'm not like, I'm not a devoted fan of like, yeah. so they don't, they don't hold like a special place to me. So I, I don't know. I do think it's different for people who really, um, think of the original movies of like they're they're really like a special thing to them so um i enjoy it a bit so I, i'm happy to see a new film from adam marcus oh mm. wow mm. secret stand is an all-time favorite film of mine todd says i can't get enough of it mm. wow cool sweet now we have to, we'll have to check it out todd oh pepe watched something in the barn and enjoyed it oh yeah Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Annabella Rich um, reviewed it for the website. Thank you, mm-hmm. Annabella Rich. She went to a screening in London. We've been invited to all these screenings in London for some reason, which is cool. So Annabella Rich um, went to one. And then Emma Dark went to another one uh, the other day. So both those reviews are on the website. And thanks to Annabella Rich and Emma Dark That's for being awesome. our uh, London uh, reviewers. Reps. Yes, yeah, that's awesome. Annabella Rich says, do I have to pretend to be Neil? Do I have to go and be, be Neil Etta? And I was like, no, no, use your real name. Neil Etta. Although, I, Neil Etta is a cool name, though. I to say. You'd be like George Foreman having kids. You just name everybody some <laughs> version of Neil. Exactly. No, only my version is I, everyone has to, everyone associated with the site has to rename themselves Neil in yeah. some way. Yes, you could just be like Neil One, <laughs> Neil Two, Neil LaBelle. No, Neil LaBelle. <laughs> no. And Neil Bell. Oh. What is it? And Neil Bell. And Neil, Neil Bell. Bell. Yeah, that's a good one. No. <laughs> Neil Yeager. Diablo Neil. Diablo Neil. That one works. But yeah, big thanks to both of them. Uh, both are very cool. Met them both at uh, Freight Fest in one Nice. Uh, what do I have? I've got... What are you going to do? Punch your camera? Maybe. <laughs> I don't know where I get this ring. It's down here. I remember once upon a time, some like, like Nazi Satanist. Well, I guess yeah, Satanism is not, from not that from big from a deal, him. but yeah. yeah, it's probably more. It probably is more Satanist. It's like Baphomet with, or it's a ram with like a upside down skull carved in its forehead. Oh, hmm. but it's not made by that guy. No, that was a long time ago. I wonder what yeah. happened to him. His rings were know. great, but he yeah. was a Nazi. Yeah, it's very, it's very weird. <laughs> His rings were yeah. Some of them I didn't know. I we used to have his links on the website for a long time. Yeah, like Neil, did you see? Did you see all of these? No. Used <laughs> They're like one. on the last pages for sure. You yeah, have yeah, to go yeah. through the catalog to find right. that, but mm-hmm. they're there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. What well, do you have there? That was fun. I've got. Another alien one. Uh, 
let's see, this came out the 27th. I feel like these are old. So apologies if, if these are repeat newses for people. Scott Wampler, Timothy Oliphant, just joined Noah Hawley's Alien TV series. And according to reports, he'll be playing a synth. Hmm. Um, yeah, Timothy Oliphant has joined the cast of Noah Hawley's Long Just Eating, and as far as we Hall. know, still not officially titled Alien TV ser- series, which is due to hit FX sometime in 2025. Hawley's Alien series remains largely shrouded in secrecy, but Deadline's report contains a number of character details that tell us what sort of beast Hawley and company are assembling. For instance, quotes, Details about Oliphant's character are not being disclosed. I hear he plays Kirsch, a synth who acts as a mentor and trainer for Sydney Chandler's Wendy, who is a hybrid, a metahuman, who has the brain and consciousness of a child, but the body of an adult. Hmm. And then Fangoria comes back with intriguing. The Alien franchise has long featured synths or synthetic people. But this bit about a hybrid metahuman with the brain of a child and the body of an adult strikes us as something new. I suppose one can make the argument that, technically speaking, the rebirth Ripley of Alien Resurrection sort of fit this bill in that she was born an adult with a mind that was roughly informed as that of a young child's. But anyone making this argument sounds like a tedious asshole and we shouldn't humor them. Damn! One more character names, here you go. In addition to Chandler, Oliphant James joins a main cast that, as Deadline reported, also includes Alex Lothar as a soldier named CJ, Samuel Blinken as Boy Cavalier, a CEO, as well as Essie Davis as Dame Sylvia, Adarsh Gurov as Slightly, and Kit Young as Toodles. These names are not grabbing me. As he, as previously reported, Holly's FX series is said to take place before the events established in Ridley Scott's original Alien movie. Um, where it takes place in comparison to, say, the events depicted in Prometheus and Alien Covenant remains a reveal for another day. It's further said to take place on Earth. How that particular fact gels with the rest of the franchise's lore is also something we probably won't be clear on until we're actually watching the show. Holly's Alien series is currently gearing up to resume filming in early 2024, likely January, with an eye towards debuting sometime in 2025. Still a long ways to go on this one. But stay tuned, and we'll keep you informed as further updates roll in. What do you think about that? I don't know. Why is there so much alien stuff going on? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I I think alien definitely, um, there's enough story there. I think you could make a TV show, especially if it's more aliens than alien. Yeah. I don't think alien you could... I mean, I guess you could, but Alien seems like it would be more you could go uh, because it's more like battles and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. How I, I mean, I feel bad to judge it based on those names, but who was it? There's um the synthetic guy Kirsch. Mm-hmm. And... Well, it just seems like stuff we've seen so many times already. Yeah, know? but like, I don't know. Boy Cavalier really bothers me. Cavalier spelled with a K, and that's a CEO. So that bothers me. Like they're gonna have someone fill the role of what's his face, Paul. What's his last name? I know who you mean, but I wouldn't know. Yeah, I don't remember his last name, but he's the CEO douchman in Aliens. Mm-hmm. I, My I don't know. I feel like someone me. named Slightly and someone named Toodles. Plus, Boy Cavalier, I don't know. That just strikes me as... Doesn't scream alien. It doesn't, and I don't know. I feel like uh, I don't want to judge it by these foolish names, Mm. but I am judging it by these foolish names. My neighbor once told me I had a Cavalier attitude. You do. I uh, ran into her, not like, but I was leaving a store Mm-hmm. And she was, said hi, and I was like, uh, hi. And she's like, you don't even know who I am, do you? And I was like, oh, no. She's like, I'm your neighbor. I was like, oh, cool, hi. And she's like, but I'm not surprised by your cavalier attitude. When did this happen? Years ago. Oh. Hmm. Well. She was very, she was not happy, pleased. She said it in a very mean way. Maybe she thought you were very mean. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
Very were you much. very cavalier at that time? How old were you? Were you even doing your show? It wasn't. Job? It wasn't twenty years ago. It was probably like five years ago. Oh, wow! I wonder if she ever watched you doing random crazy shit outside. I remember the fair, the first time I ever met her. She had moved in, and I went to get the mail, and I had I was wearing a night shirt, um, like a like a crocheted hat, and um, and combat boots. And I just looked over and waved. That's quite an impression. <laughs> That's the only th only really memory I have of any reaction with her until the Cavalier attitude. Mm -hmm. She saw you outside, like losing your mind, doing oh, rolling with your mind. I just, oh, you know. I was I just threw a hat on in my combat boots because it was no, like I'm stone. talking about all the stuff you used to do outside doing grilling with Jack and all oh, that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. You I, did some really crazy one time, stuff. And since then, she yelled at me once because I had the ladder, um, like cleaning the gutter or something, and then it was laying in the front yard. And she came over and yelled at me and said, "To the ladder was pointing towards her house, and this was somehow like bad or something." I was like, did she think so it was going to fall in her house? No, no. So, so it's like let's say this is my house, and yes. the ladder was pointing this way, but it was oh. laying in my yard because I was doing stuff with it, and she's she was upset because it was pointing towards her house. But it's like still way up against my house, and across the street. That so you were like wanted going to, to. She wanted to me move move it vertically against the house. As opposed to, point, I don't know. I think it was like she. Oh, maybe she just didn't want to see a giant like ladder laying in a yard next. No, to her. she didn't care if it was. It was still laying there, but she wanted yeah, but it not vertically. Like, yeah, it's maybe not, she it wanted was folded it folded down. Like, it was folded down. Yes. And instead of pointing this way, yes. she wanted it pointed this way. Yes, um, because ladders up against a house are less of an eyesore than just a, just a thrown out there. Well, it was literally just laying there because uh, I had just cleaned the gutters and was going to use uh, it again. So. Well, that It wasn't really... like it was sitting there for a month or something. Yeah, well then she's fucking stupid and forget her. Does she still live there? Yeah. What a bum. Her her dog's name is Jack, so say every once in a while when I, I would hear her and yell, Jack! And I, would, I would think someone was thinking, knew me from uh, my wrestling show or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, this uh, so this is uh, uh, off topic, but mm -hmm. um, so we got the uh, it was a thing from my great grandfather's house, and it was the Jones family dog house, and it was like a handmade wooden thing, mm -hmm. and it had a little dog house, and it had little dogs with everyone's name painted on it. Yeah, and for I don't know mm -hmm. how it was. I think that because they sold the house and they were given a there somehow we got it. It was after my great grandfather died, and so anyway, they flipped over all the names and they painted our our family's names on the on the thing. And the idea was like, if someone's in trouble, you put them in the doghouse. And it, so it was hung up on the wall for a while. And then, like, uh, not that long. Well, it was probably ten years ago, but I found it, and I was just looking at. And oddly enough, though, on the flip side, I was looking on the flip side, and on the flip side of the Neil one was uh, my great uncle's name or he was a, some relative of mine, but his name was jack and i thought that was very odd that Aww. that i happened to be painted on the flip side of the jack job. did you know that person at all um i may have met him but i don't really have any memory of him mm -hmm. do you have other news yes besides uh, the, the the family doghouse I think that's very cute. Uh, Eileen opens this weekend. I was trying to find uh, horror movies. There's supposed to be a lot of cool horror movies opening, but I couldn't find any that's actually playing anywhere. But Eileen is is uh, billed as a thriller, and that's opens. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it started tonight. There's not a lot said about. It. It says a woman, a woman's friendship with a new coworker has the prison facility where she works takes a sinister turn. Hmm. But I always think when they normally when they call a movie a thriller, it's really a horror movie. Mm -hmm. but they don't want it, but they don't want to say it's a horror movie. Yeah, it'll get more press as a thriller. Exactly. Mm. Uh, I have other stuff here. 
Did you have more? Oh, Eli Roth is going to make more hostile and cabin fever. Yeah, I, I would prefer him just to keep making more uh, Thanksgiving and just give yeah. up hostile movies. Well, maybe he just reinvigorated his crowd. Maybe he didn't get the response he wanted to. Maybe he's going like Rob Zombie and tries to no, do something. No, no, Thanksgiving's already, the sequel's already been greenlit. I think maybe he's going to, oh, nice. he's piggybacking off the success of Thanksgiving to That's try to bring back problem. his other. Yeah. Well, good luck. I've never him. been a big fan of the Hostel movies or the Cabin Fever. Yeah, I haven't really been into either of them. The Hostel people were all, when I've seen the one or two I saw, the people were so annoying. They're so, so annoying. I kind of was referencing it in a way when we saw Thanksgiving because I thought he got the tone right in Thanksgiving where it's a fun horror movie. Mm -hmm. Hostel is very strange because it's very dark and kind of mean movie. It's like it, mm -hmm. it was kind of ushered in the, the term um, torture porn. But it has really some strange, overtly comedic scenes that I think completely does not fit in the film mm. and so i've never thought it really worked I, I didn't i don't think it's a particularly good movie i like the idea of it i think it's a it's yeah. a good concept i also don't i think it's all, uh, a weak part of it is there's no concrete villain or the villain's not mm. interesting and it, the comeuppance so the villain is very lame i think um i like the idea but i just don't think it's a particularly great movie yeah, Cabin Fever, I felt was just such a knockoff homage. No. Yeah, I'm not no. a big fan of it. Um, no. It's got that weird scene people always talk about where, like, the kid, like, starts doing kung fu or something. Yeah. Well, it, they're popular, and I'm happy for him that he has. Yeah, no, I know people like him. I have yeah. a friend uh just knocked my microphone out. Mm, I'd say you can choose wisely of the other news because I am past yeah. my time. Um, the Strangers Chapter 1. So they're doing a remake of the, the Strangers movie, but they're doing it as a yeah. trilogy. So uh, oh. the new one is coming out, I think, next year sometime. Hmm. Hmm. I didn't see. I don't even know if I saw the first Strangers. Did I see the Strangers with you? I don't think so. I'm not a huge fan of the Strangers either. I know they definitely have their uh, following, which is it's cool. It's another Home Invasion one, isn't it? Yeah, I'm not really big on Home Invasion movies. Me either. Oh. I also, there's something of like, yeah, the masks are cool, but it's almost like they've been so overdone to me, like these kind of masks in, in movies. Mm -hmm. I don't really get remake. I'm not anti remake like a lot of people, like just like a broad brush, like no remake everything. But it seems in my mind, The Strangers isn't very old to remake. Yeah, I wonder how old it actually is. It's like, I don't know why you couldn't just do a, a new one, like a new sequel. It came out in 2008. Yeah, so I guess 15 years. But... Yeah. Seems well, fairly new to me, but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll see it, but sometimes also I think going in knowing you're making a trilogy isn't always a good idea. I don't know if there's enough story there to even do a trilogy, it. honestly. Hmm? I don't think there's. I mean, uh, there will obviously I guess expand on the first movie, but to me, there's not enough story there to do a whole trilogy. But well, what if it's their backstory? Yeah, I mean. Not to spoil the strangers, but that is like the payoff of the strangers is there is no like backstory. There is no like real like purpose. It's like just like mindless crimes. Mm. But That's also if um, sometimes if you remake something. Like you take maybe a good concept and uh, I always thought, like I said, remaking like something that's already great. If you remake mm. something and have a new idea or think you can make it better. So maybe you can expand on it and make it some different. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But that could also piss off its already existing audience. Mm. Uh, I want to tell our, uh, our friends at oh. Trash Arts, uh, their new film, Incessant, is available on uh, all these platforms. Voodoo, Vimeo, Prime. It's an amazing image. Yeah, it's a great, that's a great poster. Yeah. 
that's that's really creepy as fuck. Mm -hmm. It's great. And, uh, we like those fellas. Like yeah. those folks. I try to use the word folks. Folks is a good word. Yeah. It's neutral can cover everybody. Mm -hmm. It's not overused. Mm -hmm. I like it. Makes me kind of sound old timey. You are. Um, so I was gonna also gonna show Rust Belt Driller tomorrow night. Uh -huh. The Friday night frights on Saturday. Ah, that's a cool sounding uh, rust belt driller. Yes, I have a little uh, a quick trailer. It's only a minute. If I could, let me grab it. <sighs> It's very, it's a very cool movie, mm -hmm. and that's also um, dedicated to um, one of the creators of the movie who passed away last week. Oh, that's sad. Yep, former guest here on the show. Mm, what happened? Um, she uh, committed suicide, unfortunately. Oh, that's very sad. But we'll have uh, the star and the director and. Um, one of the producers on the show. Yeah. So we'll show the movie and then we'll do a live Q&A. It'll be a good time. That's great. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm not sure who's going to be on next week. There's a lot of people who, uh, who are on that in, list. talks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trying to, trying to set up the date sometimes is a problem, but, mm -hmm. but we have a lot of cool people. So I'm going to get on them. Yeah. Excellent. So I'm about to pass out. Said I got gooted. Gooted. I, who is this? Well, I will gooted. not type your name on the Twitch. Is this someone we know? I don't know. I would guess they're gooted. I thought they said they got booted, but they said they gooted. got gooted. Yeah, I don't know how to help you with being gooted. Hmm. Hmm. All right. So, I'm oh, tired, get your, get I'm your, uh, I've, heard, I've had a couple people tell me, and, yeah. uh, I won't say who because it's secret, but, uh, several people and, uh, one person I can mention because he's terrible. Troy has already given me his secret, Satan, and it's amazing. So get them in, get them in the next week. Hopefully, Neil Jones, P.O. Box 415, Sandwich Mass 02563. I'll post that on the website. It's on the Facebook. And uh, I have several people here in the chat that said they sent theirs in. So send it in. It, it doesn't have to be huge. And uh, I'll get it. We'll wrap them up. We'll send them back out. And it's a really fun community event. And uh, we talked a lot about a community because community is a big part of why we do the uh, the show. It's very fun. Yes. And Trust me, I know some people even said if they can afford or something. So you don't, it doesn't have to be huge at all. It could even be something you've made or whatever. It could just, uh, it's a, it's a fun event. And don't worry if you don't send in something that's, uh, you know, valued a lot. Of and it doesn't have to be something big either. Like I love this so much, this little without your head thing. Yeah. And then you could just put in an envelope. So you don't have to like find something that you got to ship. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't have to go crazy. Right. I love that so much. Yeah. So, so do that up. Uh, someone sent, uh, they actually sent stuff to me directly from Amazon, so they didn't have to pay the shipping. That's totally fine, too. So however you want to do it. John Reddy is asking when they have to be in by. Um, preferably by uh, the 15th. So by the 15th. Yeah, Just so say try by to send 15th. it this week. By the 15th. By the 15th. Yeah. Send it in this week. if you can. Send it in this week. Is, is send the best it one. in this week. Right. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> You're so kind. You're like, we'll try. And then people aren't just not going to listen. Look at this. Someone's this getting it. Nice. Thank you, Dave Thank Deadman. You. Puppy slewed out there. You better get yours in, too. Mm. Yeah. And by the 15th. Yeah. So people best be sh sending that because... That's neck. That's a week from tomorrow. Yeah. I'm so gonna I'm gonna. Busy. I've been sharing it, but I'm gonna. I'm gonna start getting annoying and post it every day. <laughs> All right. So we'll be back next week. Uh, yeah. Thank uh, Strange Nocturnal for the tune. Thanks, Sam Haynes, for the one coming up. Creepy Creepmas, I believe. Uh, Merry Creep. Merry Creepmas, which is coming right. up. It's actually from his Christmas album. And anybody out there who has cool uh, holiday tunes or or wintry tunes, horror esque weirdness, send one in if you would like to uh, play on the show. Because instead of music of the month, we're going to play uh, a lot of uh, and try to play two a week. And that'll be fun. Uh, cool. Just now, just two. All right, not until I found the video. I found the video now. All right, until next week, this is Nasty Neil. This is Animal Doctor. And this is without your head. Ha 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 